Kings of Wrestling, Chris Hero and Claudio Castagnoli come to Vanguard Championship Wrestling, more specifically to Newport News, Virginia. And the Kings of Wrestling, the greatest of all time, we're taking on the set. We eat, breathe, and sleep this business. We've chased the best tag teams in the world, so that brought us to Ring of Honor. You're at the top of that mountain. We came this close, yet we were this far away. So now you want to come to our backyard, our home BCW, and take what's ours? It's going to be a lot easier said than done. The only bump zone is going to be this part right here on Lance Lude's face. The only bump zone is going to be right across here on Jason's chest. Scared you, didn't it? Now you want to come into our backyard, BCW, you want to beat on boards and talk loud? Let's do that too, because we can do that. <laughs> Boys better watch out. Because you know what they say, kings reign supreme. Boom! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Liberty Lottery 2010. I'm your host, Blake Chadwick, sitting alongside, welcome back, Jerry Stephanitis to the BCW Broadcast Team. Well, thank you, Blake. It's been a long time since I've been here, and too long in my estimation, but it's nice to be back. It has been a long time. Jerry, of course, the voice of VCW for many, many years. He has slid back into the booth with me. This is our first time working together, and Jerry couldn't think of a better show than Liberty Lottery. Well, I agree 100% with you. Liberty Lottery is my favorite event of the year. Only at Liberty Lottery can you see so many guys just beat the crowd out of each other at one time and the fans get to pick the names it's a great selection it's very interactive lots of surprises lots of stuff going on and of course the big prize at the end the winner of the liberty lottery gets to choose a title shot at any championship of their choice in vcw of course the biggest prize the world championship the liberty title is a possibility of course the vcw world tag team championships we will find out in just a little while who will be at the top of the mountain well you talk about who will be at the top of the mountain here's a guy who i think going to be at the top of the mountain one of these days, and that's Bolo Young. Talk about a mysterious character from the Orient. Bolo Young is dangerous, Blake. I mean, the few matches we've seen him, him have, he, he's unstoppable. I mean, we saw him in a singles matchup. He looked very impressive. We saw him in a tag team contest look very impressive. And throughout the entire time I've seen him, not only is he one of the most intimidating figures in BCW, I have to believe he's on the fast track to superstar. You're 100% right about that. He's in there with the enforcer, C.W. Anderson, as well. We should point out this is a, a triple threat match between these two gentlemen and then Chris Escobar is going to be making his way out here shortly. And I'm looking forward to this one myself because I just love chaos. Uh, this will certainly be chaos. I couldn't think of a better way to kick off Liberty Lottery 2010 here. The enforcer, C.W. Anderson, of course, he's had problems with our VCW champion, Damian Wayne, in the past. Bolo Young, as he mentioned, a rising attender. Chris Escobar has had problems recently with the big, even more imposing in figure, Mugabe the Cannibal. Esco's going to try to extract himself from that situation in this match because you got to believe, Jerry, the winner of this is in line for that VCW title shot somewhere in the near future. Right, and I believe that Bolo Young, out of all three competitors in this matchup, he's going to be my favorite. I'm going to select Bolo Young as being the victor because we saw him defeat Chris Escobar previously before. He's dangerous. He's unpredictable. He's somebody that I think is, is going to be a wild card and is most likely going to be the winner tonight. Bolo Young certainly is going to be a wild card here. You're picking Bolo Young. I'm going to have to be different. I'm going to go with this man, Chris Escobar, because there's nothing like Escobar to light a crowd on fire. I don't know any superstar in VCW that can get the crowd on their feet and get them just the, the emotion going like Chris Escobar can. And I think if anyone can use the crowd to their advantage throughout this entire evening, it's going to be Mr. Esco. Well, it depends on what you define as advantage, Blake, because to be honest, there are a lot of guys that use the crowd here in VCW who, who draw from the crowd, who don't win matches. And, and es point? Escobar's won his fair share of matches. He's definitely a top uh, talent here in VCW. But the problem is, is that Escobar, when it comes to being the VCW heavyweight champion, he's, he's kind of always the bridesmaid, never the bride. He's never been the VCW heavyweight champion. That is a good point. Bell sounds. This one's underway. Liberty Lottery 2010 here kicks off with this triple threat contest. Chris Escobar, Bolo Young, and the enforcer C.W. Anderson, the Wiley veteran. Lots of different mixes of styles here. Should be interesting to watch. And three amazing talents as well. They're all very good at what they do. Uh, Escobar, like you were saying before, he takes crazy risks. He dives over things. He jumps on people from high places. Bolo Young, he's unorthodox. He chops you. He'll, ch he'll choke you. He'll slam you on the ground as he's trying to throw Escobar up. Tries to give him the, the 
backdrop there. Esco rolls through and a big time hip toss there by Chris Escobar. Excuse me, arm drag. Gets him another one. Gets it real deep in there. And Chris Escobar in control early on. Bolo Young. Nice job by Esco. Well, nice job by Bolo Young getting out of the ring after that. Well, Bolo Young and Esco started the match off there. Oh, and CW, he's going to Pearl Harbor Esco as you cannot turn your back in a triple threat match. No, and you can't turn your back on an Anderson either. CW has that family lineage behind him as well. There he goes, the Leaf Frog off the ropes. CW picks him up, spins around, and nice head scissors takedown by Chris Escobar. Escobar now taking down Young, taking down CW Anderson, and I don't think he's done here. It looks like Anderson's calling for timeout. Well, can you blame him? No, I cannot. That's a nice veteran move by C.W. Anderson, taking a breather while he can early on, collecting himself. But he's got to be careful here because Bola Young hits him with the right hand. That's right. Look at these two bruisers beating each other up on the outside. Wait a minute. Here comes Escobar. Escobar flies. Look at the plancha up and over the top rope. Chris Escobar slingshots himself up and over, and he is a house of fire to start off this contest. That was a, a daredevil-like maneuver there by Escobar, and you got to wonder if those type of chances are going to pay off for him in this matchup because sometimes they're not worth it. High risk, high reward indeed. That one pays off. And Esco's going to try to put C.W. Anderson back in the ring now and hopefully gain control. But you can't let Anderson in first. But a great job by Esco to back away before Anderson can hit him. Well, it's like he saw it coming there, Blake. I mean, he was paying attention, fortunately. He didn't just dive head first in the ring. Escobar is not no dummy. He wasn't born yesterday. And, oh, Escobar tried to take him over there with a head scissor, drove him head first into the ground. Yeah, that probably actually put more pain there on C.W. than he anticipated. It looks like a Modified Hurricane Rana by Esco, but he might have hurt his knee. That's right there. Oh, there you see. And you cannot turn your back on C.W. Anderson as Escobar walks right into a left hand and the enforcer now in control in the first few minutes. He enforced that left hand on the face of Chris Escobar. And indeed he did. Look at Anderson now with his kicks on Bolo Young. Young, of course, from the Far East. Very talented, very disciplined with the martial arts. C.W. Anderson, more of a technician. Should be interesting to see how that meshes. And, and look, you see C.W. going from Bolo Young now to Escobar. He senses the damage done to Escobar. Oh, stomping on the arm, working the arm. Anderson trademark, of course. Of course, Anderson picked that body part and attacked it the entire time. But Bolo Young here doesn't give Anderson any time to get things going. He starts his, his array of kicks. And look at the educated feet of Bolo Young. Oh, goodness. That looks like I was trying to clothesline him up and over. But down goes C.W. Anderson. And the man from the Far East, Jerry's pick in this match, is in control. That's right. You see him throwing those kicks and those chops and everything else. Bolo Young. He's, like I said, he's so unpredictable out there. You don't know what he's going to throw at you next. And he just threw a headbutt at Escobar. Look at the headbutt there using all the body parts. But Esco here fighting back for his dear life as Bolo Young might have used a cheap shot there to regain control as it's now a two-on-one attack here. Bolo Young and C.W. Anderson on Chris Escobar. Well, and you see you can't make friends in the three-way match, obviously. You see C.W. there attacking Bolo Young and kicking him straight in the spine. Snap mares him over, kick bigger than kick the spine. Well, that'll press one, two, and that's that's going to be a two count for our first near fall of the contest here. I like CW there going for the win early on, trying to get a surprise victory. Right, well, and you see now he's going back to Escobar as I stated before. Escobar, the most damage has been done to him so far in this matchup. We've seen Escobar withstand a lot of uh, damage in the past. Or CW. Oh, he goes for the sunset flip, but Escobar, a very nice move by CW there to get him into the cross arm break. Well, and you might have had a submission, but there you see Bolo Young since that. He broke up the pin. You might have a three count all. And he kicks out there. Bolo Young comes comes in with the roaring elbow, a la Great Muda. There's another man from the Far East there, and that's going to take away CW's chance at victory. And now Young controls with knees to the back. Off the ropes here. Oh, and a big diving clothesline, it looked like, by Bolo Young taking out CW. Lateral press one, two, and Esco is going to break it up. We need to find out where Bo Young has been training, Blake, uh, for all these years. I know, like I said, it's been in the Far East, but you see, like you said, Muda-like offense, various things we've seen. I've seen some Pat Tanaka out there as well. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he, he's using all the styles out there of the Far East, and we probably haven't even seen all he has to offer yet. As CW here using everyone in this match, the Irish whips Esco into Bolo Young. Fireman's carry position. Esco's foot takes out Young. Oh, Escobar looks like he slipped out there on, and, and may have uh, caught Anderson with his elbow on the way down. He swings him up and around, and all three men are out now. Referee putting the count on, and uh, Jerry, all, everyone's out here. No one's in control. Well, Bolo Young's about to be in control, Blake. As you see, he's rolling over there trying to get a cover on somebody. CW here moving around. Esco see, moving look around. At that. Bolo Young, he rolls over. 
and it looks like he almost got the uh, cover opportunity, but CW breaks it up. Yeah, well, all three of these guys are hurt right now. Now you see they're all, oh, they're all, we're back to square one. Everybody's fighting each other. Everyone on their knees here, chopping and punching, palm thrusting away, mixing the three styles here. All three men just beating on each other. I mean, I know I picked Bully to be my favorite, but at this stage, anyone can win this matchup after what they've been. Oh, wait a minute, Escobar ducks under there. Oh, double drop kick, taking out both men after ducking the double clothesline. The cover on Young, one. Two, no good there. That's probably the first opportunity in this contest where the third man didn't break up the fall. Hey, look at Escobar's. They got a bit of a second wind here. Never mind. CW capture suplex. He grabs him up and over, T bones him, and a near fall there. Very nice move by CW Anderson using a suplex variation, taking out Chris Escobar. Well, CW Anderson is a very dangerous competitor. He's got a great a wealth of wrestling knowledge. He's got some incredible maneuvers, like you just saw that capture suplex he threw at the Ferris wheel, I believe he calls it. But look at that move by Bolo Young, the roll through there, getting that rolling kick, and Bolo Young gets a near fall as your pick is in control once I, again. I believe it was a knee, and that's one of Bolo Young's signature maneuvers. We actually saw him defeat Chris Escobar with a rolling knee to the face. Indeed, we did just a few shows ago. Now sending off Escobar. Look at this. Let's see what Bolo Young can come up with this time. Tries the hip toss. Esco blocks it. He goes and gets a modified roll through there. Two and no. And Chris Escobar being very innovative here, trying to get anything he can to take these men out. All these guys are pulling out the big guns at this stage in the match, Blake. We've seen some trademark maneuvers out of each of them. They're trying to get that big victory. Like we said, very important. The championship committee's got to be watching the winner here. The Irish reversal, and Esco moves, and CW plants a super kick right in the kisser of Young. Spinebuster by Esco on Esco 2, 3, and that'll do it. CW Anderson steals this one. And if there's one thing you don't do, it's kick out of an Anderson Spinebuster. The enforcer, and he, he may have fooled out of both of us, Blake. CW Anderson has won the matchup. Absolutely unbelievable there. Plants a super kick right on the kisser of Bola Young. Going for Chris Escobar. Esco ducks, but he walks right into the spine buster. The veteran C.W. Anderson pulls out the victory. And like you said, the championship committee has to be watching this. And their eyes will be on C.W. Anderson for a title shot in the future. Well, and the last time he got a title shot, that the, the living legend Larry Zabisco stepped in the ring. And, and actually, he screwed C.W. out of the championship. So maybe this time, maybe this time it'll be fair and we'll have a new B.C. CW champion. That might be so. We'll find out in just a couple of months, possibly, when CW could get a title shot. Of course, the winner of the Liberty Lottery could also get a title shot. I don't know if that would potentially supersede CW's at all, but CW pulls out the victory here in a hard-fought battle at Liberty Lottery. on this music career, their attitudes have just taken a complete 180. I personally haven't supported a lot of the things they've done, but you cannot take away their talent in the ring. Two of the most talented young men on the VCW roster, especially when it comes to the tag team division, and they're going to face a very tough test here. Lance and Harlem Bravado, you know, Jerry, they, they have wrestled some matches in Ring of Honor. They're young up-and-coming tag team, you know, 
looking like a, a very well-oiled unit. Can they provide a possible test here for the halls? Okay, I've heard I've heard about these Bravado brothers before. I've you know I've heard that they're you know they could be a, a, a great future tag team. Let me preface that statement again with, with future. It was a future tag team. They may be able to be a great future tag team. But right now the Hall Stars are a great tag team. They've proven themselves. They've done so many great things in VCW, and I just don't think the Bravados have a chance against them. So with that being said, you, you don't even think this is going to be a match. I mean, they, they I mean, may. They they may get a couple move. They may get like a move in, you know, here or there. But the All Stars, I'm telling you, look, we've seen the All Stars. They've they've beaten everybody in BCW. Th that is true. They've been multiple time tag team champions, of course. The current tag team champions, the set, they lost the All Stars. What about 30 times before they finally won the tag team titles? That is true. I mean, you're, you're very right there. Those two had a couple of summers ago, uh, an intense rivalry, multiple multiple matches, some of the best tag team wrestling we've seen in BCW history. And that really put all these teams on the map in the halls. Still, obviously, you know, you, you're fond of them. Well, you saw Ross Hall a second ago, though, too. Ross Hall was having words with the Punker. See, the Punker, in previous matches, the Halls have been on a bit of a losing streak. I mean, they lost to Chach and Cry. I think they're blaming on the Punker. I, I, well, I mean, you know, they, it wasn't until they brought the Punker out that they really started losing a lot of matches, if you want to really get down to it. I, I, I guess. Who are you going to blame? I mean, they, they, they were a dynasty here in VCW for a long time. They bring this kid around, and now they're starting to lose matches. So you're directly correlating the Hall Stars' recent losses to the Punker being added to the squad. I mean, I'm no mathematician, but I mean, like, I think if you were to put the equation together, you would determine that, you know, A plus B equals B equals C. I mean, I mean, th those things are directly related to each other. You might have a point, but I would like to believe the Halls could do it with or without the Punker, and I don't necessarily think he's going to affect them too much. We've seen them align with Spencer Chestnut in the past. As this match is underway here, looks like a, a hammer or a, a waist lock situation as the Halls trying to get out of it. Well, the Halls are trying to give the Bravados a little bit of, of confidence right now so that they'll, you know, bring as much as they can before the All-Stars eventually, you know, beat them. I mean, that, that's really what Oh, and a big leg lariat there by the Bravado brother. Let will press one, two, and a kick out there trying to get an early cover. I mean, that was an athletic maneuver, and it looked a nice tag right there. I mean, that, that's a good move. Looks right, like they have the basics here. Nice move there. That was fairly impressive, but I mean the Hall Stars, like I said, they're just lulling them into a false sense of security right now. Eventually, they're gonna they're gonna kick it into overdrive here, and the Bravados are gonna know what hit them. The double Russian leg sweep by the Bravado brothers. Here comes another tag off the top rope here, and an axe handle right into the midsection there. Bravado's looking good so far. Uh, and like I said, it was impressive thus far, but I mean the oh he's got the hair. You gotta let go of the hair. Do I even do I even need to list all the accolades of the All Stars again? I think we covered that already. I mean there's there's no see and look. Here we go, tag team offense. I mean, you know, and the cheap shot right there from the apron. It was, I mean, it was legal. You hit him in the shoulders, you know. You didn't hit him in the, like, throat. You didn't pop him in the Adam's apple or anything. Here we go, a tag in here. The brothers, Ross and James Hall here. The referee's distracted. The Hall's getting a double team and a double suplex right there, and the Halls are going to gain control. That was kind of the other bravado's uh, fault there. For, it is. For being... That was a rookie mistake. I'm, I'm, you're absolutely correct. Nice, uh, nice knee drop there by uh, by Ross, I believe that is in the ring. Ross, and he's gonna get a one count out of it. Being a little too cocky there is the tag back into James Hall. Ross and James, the Hall Stars, multiple time VCW Tag Team Champions, looking to get back on the winning track here. And the double back body drop right there. The Halls are in control here. When the Halls go out there, it's like looking in a, in a mirror, Blake. It's like you got, I mean, you've got the same guy basically out there, not only because they're they twins. They fool me all the time. Not only because they're twins, but also because, I mean, their movements are so crisp. I mean, it looks like they're doing, it is the most perfectly timed uh, at wrestling that you can possibly see anywhere. Because these guys, I mean, they've known each other since birth. Th this is true. And they, you'd have to imagine if anyone's wrestled, them enough. It's going to be, they've wrestled each other. You have to imagine throughout the years they've had many matches and know exactly what the other one's going to do at all times here. There's like an arm bar variation here. Well, I've got the inside track to that. You know, it always turned out a draw whenever the Hall Stars, because they were uh, both so good, they always... Oh, oh yeah. I'm sure it did. I'm sure that's what they told you. That's what, I, that is actually what they told me. Here we go, double team now. Irish whip into the corner, off the ropes, double back elbow drop, and the handspring didn't go exactly all right. how they placed somebody there, get, Jerry. Somebody get the punker out there with a towel to wipe up that wet spot on the mat that they just... Oh, what is this? It was a college basketball game or something all of a sudden? Here we go. Irish whip reversal into the corner. 
He's going to miss. Oh, and a backcracker right there. Could this do it for the Verano brothers? Let him press one, two. Oh, and the save right there. Jerry, we were half a count away from a huge upset by the Verano. Hey, it, was, it was pretty close. But was that even the legal hall star? I mean, is this ref? I don't know. You know them better. It. You tell me which one's legal. I don't know. Well, okay. Wait, look at this. Okay, double offense. Come on. Yeah. Wait a minute. Oh, oh, and he pushes him into him. Off the ropes. Oh, and a big forearm smash here. Both of these teams looking very similar to each other. Bravado off the ropes. Here he comes. Misses the clothesline. Hall slides underneath. Charges. Oh, and a suicide dive to the outside. And he's going to take out the punker. And his partner, his brother. The whole crew's out. I don't know what to say, Blake. I mean, the, the, the Bravado. I mean... I don't, the think the are house of fire. I don't think the All-Stars expected this out of the Bravado brothers. I, you, and, and, and now what are they setting up for? Here we go. Stereo plunges. Oh. Yes, indeed. And the Bravados are in firm control in their VCW debut. I never thought I'd hear that. I never thought I'd hear it either. I didn't think we'd be able to get such great talent from around the country, but we have done it here. The Bravado's really staking a claim to, to possibly these fixtures on the roster. I blame the punker for this. The punker has not done anything yet. He's not interfered once. It's got to be his fault. Either way now, keep your eyes on the Bravado. Oh, look at that strength. They're going to catch him here. The Hall's double team, and they slam him up and over. Nice job. They flip him around. They're not done with him, Blake. Oh, here they come. The Giants swing into the backbreaker. Double team move. Nice job by the Halls. Is that going to be a cover? Is that even the legal Hall? Two. And Bravado's kick out here. Of course it's the legal hall. Why would the illegal one be in the ring right now? They switch from time to time. You've seen the matches. I've heard your commentary. Right there, the referee was looking. I mean, if it was the wrong hall, it's the referee's fault. That remains to be seen, but a chin lock applied. Now the crowd getting behind the Bravado brothers. Nice to see the crowd buying into the Bravados, really getting behind them without really knowing much about them. Well, I will, I mean, like I said earlier in the, in the other sunset match. flip, watch out here, that could do it, one, two, oh, a near fall once again, Bravado's getting oh, oh, and there close. you go, like I was in the previous match, you see the fans can bring you to a certain point, but it didn't help him right there when he just got clotheslined in the throat. Grape finds the leg and tags in his brother here, the Hall Stars, doing a great job thus far. You know, the Hall Stars are such a busy tandem, they actually have a concert later this evening. I don't know if you're aware of that or not. Where? It's, it's at a large location. I don't know if you've ever heard of this place. It's, it's, it's called Springboard. The... Oh, excuse me. One second. Slingshots himself in with a splash. Tags in this brother. He's going to pull him in. Oh, nice move again. Slingshot one, two. And the Halls get another near fall. It's the world famous corner pocket in Waynesburg, Virginia. Have you ever heard of that place? I, I've heard of it. That's where they're playing later. <sighs> Free. What do you mean? For, the Hall Stars don't do anything for free. I, I don't know, know what you're suggesting. Free. I'm, I'm going. I'm paying for my ticket. I already have mine. You probably got yours comped. I didn't get anything comped. I had to pay for my ticket. I have a VIP pass, actually. I paid extra for that. Back to the action in the ring now. Here we go. Oh, rams him right into the corner in the halls in firm control. The tag in now. And the double team. Here we go. Setting up the bravados and a double, looks like, almost hip toss variation. And back to Great Vining the leg. Well, they saw that there was an injury, it looks like, in this matchup, and, and they're trying to focus in on that leg. They're trying to take it out. I mean, these bravados, they're jumping, they're flipping, they're throwing, they're doing all this crazy stuff. And the Hall Stars have figured out that the smartest thing to do right now is to ground one of them. They ground one, the other one's going to get thrown off. It looks like Lance Bravado there nearly goes for the rear naked choke out of the leg grapevine, but the Hall Brothers going to knock him down. And the Hall Stars here, the tag. They, they each have a leg. Oh, look at this. This is going to be some excellent tag. Here we go. The roll through. Oh, and they just slam them down. Nice double T move by the Hall Stars here. Former two-time VCW World Tag Team Champions here. And going right back to work on the left leg of Lance Bravado. Match is over. Call it. The Hall Stars. Have he has not given up. I heard the bell. He has not given up yet. The Bravados are very much in this match. Hall's in control right now. There are lots of quick tags. Very good tag team wrestling here by the former VCW champs. Well, duh. I mean, they're the former VCW tag team champs, of course. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. It doesn't. What do you mean it doesn't necessarily mean anything? They're the two-time VCW tag team champions. You know how long they were the tag team champions? Aside from like a month in there where they, they got uh, some weird thing happened and they lost the belts for like a month. They had the belts for basically two years in between that full time frame. They didn't necessarily hold them every time by 
legal actions. Yeah. They had the belts, didn't they? And double, look at this double hip toss. Look at this. Look at this. Picking him back up again. Back body drop. And the Hall's off their big splash. One, two, and Harlem Bravado breaking it up there. They make it look so effortless because they're so good at what they do, Blake. They just know, one knows where the other is at all times. I, I guarantee if you put blindfolds on both the Hall Stars, they could still wrestle circles around the Bravado Bird. They're obviously a very accomplished tag team, but the task at hand right here, Lance and Harlem Bravado, and to once again reiterate, the Punker has done nothing in this match to possibly interfere. Uh, yeah, I mean, he got jumped on. He got in the way on the outside. He was helping, he was tending to the, down, the injured Hall. Look, I just, you know, maybe I have a bias against roadies or something. I don't know. But I just don't think that the, I don't think that the punker is necessary outside goes, of the Goes for the Inzaguri, flips him around here, and a half crab. Here comes a half crab. Trying to swing him around here. And he's got, driving the knee in the back, a modified half crab there. I mean, think about the people that are roadies anyway. I mean, they go out there, they tune an instrument for three seconds, they set up a mic stand. How difficult is that job? They have to keep track of the equipment. They have to make sure fans don't get backstage. They have to keep, make sure the well-being of their performers. So they're basically like the errand boy. They do all the jobs the stars don't have to do. Wait, it's, wait, it's a cradle. One, two, oh. And Jerry, once again, the bravado is almost stealing this one in their VCF. Wait a minute. Hands. The diving what? tag. Here comes Harlem Bravado. There's a clothesline. And another one. He's taking the Hall Stars. Bravado Brothers, a house of fire here. He's going to grab him. Irish whip. Reversal here. That's right. Look at that reversal. Up, Nicely he done. He blocks. Chops into the hall. He grabs a belly-to-belly -belly suplex. One, two, oh, and a seated drop kick breaks it up. Nice job there. I believe that was Ross Hall. That was twin tuition right there. Basically, he, he could sense that his brother was in danger. He dropped those boots right in the side of the bravado's head. He saved The Irish whip into the corner. Ric Flair-esque off the ropes. Running the ri running the apron. Oh, he oh, closed no. his brother. He closed lines his brother. And taking a page out of the Hall's book, he's going to drop kick him off the apron. Are you kidding me? Where's the twin tuition on that one? That was right out of the Hall's book. Could this... If we, he flips out. All right, come on. Now there's two of them and he only one all star. Off the ropes. Neck breaker variation. That could do it. One, two. Oh, and he kicks out again. The bravado's getting so oh, close. Uh, yeah, and then getting so rammed into the guardrail. Wasn't there supposed to be a five count there for illegal double team interference? There's obviously a five count, but it didn't reach it. Here he's going to block the suplex. Yeah, nice try. You don't, you don't suplex. You don't suplex a Hall Star. Oh, it looks like almost a, a reverse neck breaker and a suplex. You don't suplex James is Hall. Is he going to roll James, with them? You don't suplex James Hall because he is the master of the rolling suplex. Here he goes again here. James Hall going for suplex number two. And he's got him elevated. Ross off the top high cross body. Nicely done. Lateral That's press it. by James. One, and two. Three. No, and he kicks out the Bravados. Look at the fight and determination and resiliency by Lance Bravado. Are you kidding me? How did he kick out of that? He's obviously, he, he, he's got a lot more left in the tank than we thought. That is a, that is a trademarked Hall Star specialty right there. Here we go. Looks like a double suplex. The Hall's trying to put away the Bravado brothers. The Hall Star's here. Delayed suplex. Wait a minute. He pulls him out of it. And a double close line. No. One Hall goes out. Here the Bravados go. Double oh. team. Looks like a kick into a German suplex. Oh, no. The bridge. Come. Two, three. What? Bravados win. What? The Bravados win. What? The Bravados have just beaten the Hall Stars in their VCW debut. I heard you the first two times. I was being sarcastic. How? How did the How? I'm in shock and disbelief. The Bravados coming in here, taking out the former two-time tag team champions. And Jerry, the punker, had nothing to do with it. What do you mean they had nothing to do with it? It was entirely the punker's fault. How is it the punker's fault? It was clean victory. Super kick, bridging German suplex, ball game. But like, you ever seen a penny on the ground that's facing tails up? You know why they tell you not to pick it up? Because it's bad luck. Oh, my goodness. And I think the punker would, is bad luck for the Would you stars. please give the bravado some credit here? I, you look, I would. I think it would have been a different match if Spencer Chestnut was out there, if the Halls were out there with, with no nobody else. If they had their gold records, it would be a different story, for God's sake. So if they brought the whole the whole band too, the, the drums and the guitars and everything. Yeah, if they yeah, if they had their, their their band out there, that'd be great. Either way, then they, could, then they could play a song in the ring after the match. Would you stop it?
Lance and Harlem Bravado here getting a huge victory over the Hall Stars. Got to go down as one of the biggest upsets in VCW history. I won't dispute that with you. Either way, a victory here by the Bravados has to provide them another chance at VCW, and you have to believe when they come back, Ross and James Hall will be looking for them. It's about time. Spencer Chestnut's gonna make his way out here with John Kerman, the Liberty Champion. Oh, great. Great, just what I need, another Kerman and Spencer segment. What's wrong with that? Well, first of all, when I used to do the ring announcement. Never mind, I don't want to hear what's wrong with that. Spencer Chestnut right there. Spencer Chestnut, let me tell you something, but let me tell you. What is he wearing? Let me tell you a brief story. Hold on, what is John Kerman wearing? This is not the hockey season. The man has a match with a crazy lunatic called the Necro Butcher. Would you go out there in regular wrestling tights? I know who the Necro Butcher is. Either way, he's he looks like is Patrick Waugh. What is he doing? He's going, he's protecting himself, Blake. What do you mean, what's he doing? Let me get back to my story, please. Spencer Chestnut, I had some legal troubles recently. You know who I called? I called Spencer Chestnut. Really? All my problems disappeared. Let, let, me, let me guess, he asked you to pay up front? Of course. Well, that's what all attorneys do, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't have any legal problems anymore, thanks to Spencer. I'm sure John Kerman might have some legal problems after tonight. Oh, wait. We gotta hear what Spencer's gotta say. Uh oh. By all means, let's quiet down here in the booth. The crowd doesn't want to quiet down. <laughs> you get it? Because we're in a Greek, Greek community center. That's funny. It's all Greek to him. He's just, I mean, sign him up for the improv. Kazi's maybe. So what you're telling me is you want choices. 
Do you want to be able to choose, to pick and choose? Maybe which referee you'd like for the match tonight? Is that what you're saying? I want to be First off, I don't need a man out here so the job can be done properly. That's right. But if I have to choose between the lesser of two evils, I'll take the bimbo that didn't screw up my match last time, and I'll pick Cameo. Well then, ladies and gentlemen, it is official. The referee for the match tonight will be... That's not what Kerman said. See what I mean? He is here tonight for the first time in the ring for VCW, for the first time in Newport News, Virginia. Ring of Honor's own Nick Cole Butcher. He is doing what's good for the company. Stephanie deserves to be the referee in this match. He probably booked it long before this, this segment here. Oh, no. And look, here comes the man. Well, Kermit should have been wearing a suit of armor instead of all those pants because the Necro Butcher is probably the most dangerous person in professional wrestling right now. If you've ever seen the movie The Wrestler, you can seriously see how dangerous this man can be. Light tubes, glass, I mean, the garbage cans, the man staples his tongue. I mean, the guy is crazy. And I have a V-rated match. And it is V-rated. This match is officially V-rated. And I just hope for Steffi's sake, she's on the way. John Kermit is a wrestler. John Kermit is an athlete. John Kermit does not need to go out there and hit people with trash cans to... Oh, wait a minute. I tell you what, we don't have to do this. It doesn't have to be V-rated. It doesn't have to be no disqualification. I didn't even sign for a V-rated matchup. They just decided to go ahead and make it so. I'll take all this stuff off if you agree to wrestle me one-on-one. -on -one. Just because this match is not on his terms doesn't mean it's not fair. It actually does. He's the champion. It doesn't matter. There's a committee. There's a hierarchy. Have you ever, ever, ever heard of Champion's Advantage? Yeah, Champion's Advantage because he can technically get counted out or disqualified and keep the saddle. Oh, that's what the, the dirt sheets would have you believe. The Champion's Advantage is that dirt sheets. Have you ever watched wrestling? Yes, I've watched wrestling. There were 30 years oh, ago. I've never seen wrestling before. What is this we're watching right now? The dirt sheets would have you believe that that's what that means. But but the champion's advantage is the fact the champion gets to make up his own rule. Because he can jump out, he can jump the record butcher at the bell. That's why champion's advantage. Here we go. This one's underway. And unfairly, John Kerman has gotten the advantage. What do you mean unfairly? It's a V-rated match. There's no rules. He jumped him prior to the bell. John Kerman here on, look, a wrestling move, a headlock. Necro Butcher's not going to know what to do now. He might He's not. caught him in a headlock. He might not know what to do with the side headlock. As John Kerman here, wrenching it in, right against the chest protector there. Uh, well, the hammerlock. I, I don't think, I don't think Necro Butcher's throwing any fast balls. Yeah, but he just countered into a hammerlock and a headlock. I mean, I, I, that's not what I've seen, at least from the tapes I've seen. In the oh, there's a shoulder lock takedown. Look at the Necro Butcher running the ropes barefoot here. And Kerman, oh, wait. Necker Butcher with a big hip toss there. Necker Butcher pulling out all the basics. Uh, Kerman looked like he was going for a leapfrog. Necker oh, Butcher blocked it and caught him with that hip toss. And now Monkey flipped him. Necker Butcher, Monkey flipping Kerman over and sends him to the outside. The Necker Butcher here, Jerry, looking a little more technically sound than you thought. I, I'm very surprised. And now he's taking it to the outside. He's going to look. This is what, oh, this is what the Necker Butcher is notorious for. The flip off the apron. The insanity of the Necker Butcher. This is where he's most comfortable, Blake. On the outside. Why is Spencer wearing a helmet? I mean, he's he's outside the ring in a V-rated match. He doesn't. You don't know what could come flying at him. You know, I'm surprised he doesn't have like a face guard or something as well. And the Necker Butcher here has taken off the chest protector of John Kerman and starts chopping away, punching away, and raking at the eyes. John Kerman better be careful here. We might see another. A new champion here, BCW Liberty. Oh, oh God, this is completely unfair. John Kerman was wearing that protective gear for a reason. Why did the Necro Butcher take it off? Necro Butcher slams him right into the ring post, it looks like. And the Butcher here taking control. We've seen the Butcher compete in a variety of promotions. Of course, working with the Ring of Honor as well. Necker Butcher here looking to make a name for himself in BCW, and he's doing so right now. And look at him crotch Kerman right there on the ring post. Was that necessary? It's V-rated. What if John Kerman wants to have kids?
That's he can still have kids. He might not now. You don't know what damage that could have done. He signed up for the V-rated contest. At least he's wearing a cup, I guess. I mean, oh, you would have that to assume the butcher starts chopping away. The butcher chopping some meat on the outside. Oh, and he's got a chair. Come on now, referee. How far are you going to let this go? It's V-rated. That is legal in this contest. I know it's legal, but I mean, you know, there's got to be some level of referee's discretion. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait, Steffi, the ref on take is out there. The exposed floor. Butcher has Kerman up with a chair behind his back. Oh, he on. can't do this. Scoop slam on the floor. Oh. John Kerman's back might be shattered into a million pieces. Oh, my good. On top of the chair and on top of the floor. I mean, gee, guy, come on now. Why doesn't the, why isn't the referee? Well, I know why she's not. Because she's biased against men. That's why. She's not She's not going out there and stopping them. She wants to see these two tear well, each other. I up. won't argue with you. I'm sure she's not too fond of John Kerman. But nonetheless, it's a V-rated contest. She's an official designated by VCW. And she is scheduled for this contest. And she will do the best of her job. Butcher going for round two here. He can't do this. He cannot do this. Slams Kerman once again on the chair. The Necro Butcher is one sick man. How can the, and these fans are sick. They called for that. They wanted him to do it again. The VCW fans, we know they like violence, that V-rated action. You see a t-shirt right there promoting the V-rated action. And you know what? Necro Butcher brings it unlike any other. Yeah. And John Kerman, unfortunately, is finding that out. And I don't, I don't think Spencer Chester knows what to do. He doesn't want to get near the Necro Butcher. And another shot to the chest by the Necro Butcher as he is in firm control. Oh, John Kerman punching away. And you have to believe at some point that the lack of boots by the Necro Butcher might play a role. I mean, yeah, if Kerman steps on his toes. I mean, he, he needs shoes. I mean, I can only think of Superfly Jimmy Snuka succeeding without shoes. I mean, just goes to show how crazy the guy is. I mean, just like another thing. I mean, he's kind of a bumpkin as well. I mean, oh, this does not matter. This is V-rated. Anything goes here, and he's just going to throw John Kerman towards the entranceway. Yeah, he threw him into a sec security right there. Come on. Here he goes. He's going to send him. Oh, he throws him right to a security guard. We need those security guards. They're going to keep the fans at bay. I bet was huge. He's probably just as big as a guardrail. Yeah, now, and just as much. And now he's down because John Kerman got thrown head first into him. Come on now. Slides the chair into the ring here. The Necro Butcher in firm control of John Kerman. Butcher looking at his first taste of VCW gold. It's Major says it. Now that is illegal. That's you cannot do that. Oh, and that's not what was happening. Necro Butcher got his leg caught on the bottom rope and Spencer was trying to help him out. And Kerman regains control with a steel chair shot. Spencer Chestnut can be on the outside, but he cannot interfere. And now Kerman going to work on the butcher's right knee, which already has a brace on it with that steel chair. Well, that's a smart move then. Obviously, it's injured. It's Necro Butcher's own stupid fault for going out there with a brace on. It's nothing wrong working on it, but Spencer led to this. I guess that's part of having him in your corner. Everything's legal in a V-rated match. Blake Spencer could get in the ring and wrestle the whole oh, Look at this. Look at this. John Kerman sitting in the chair, which is on top of Butcher's leg. He, the Necro Butcher's trapped. Wait, he's proven a point here. These sick fans. Wanted to watch Kerman pummel him with this chair somewhere. Wait a minute. Necker Butcher grabbing him here. What's he going to do? He's going to pull Kerman off. And John Kerman finally stands up, but he's still in control here. I mean, the guy probably stinks. <laughs> the guy probably stinks. That's why he was trying to get him off of him. Oh, please. Either way, John Kerman in control has the Necker Butcher spinning toehold. Possible figure four setup. What is he going to do, the Necro Butcher? He's going to prescribe some pain to him. That's what and it looks like a modified figure four leg lock right in the center of the ring. John Kerman trying to take out the knee of the Necro Butcher. He's doing a pretty good job. Not only does John Kerman have fists of steel, he has knees of iron. And he's using those knees right now to torment the Necro Butcher. And the wait a Necro Butcher bends the iron as he flips it around and he reverses the figure four now, applying the pressure to Kerman's leg. He gets in the ropes and he will have to break even though this is being rated. Oh, come on now. Yeah, see, Steffi, tell them, I mean, I don't think Necro really thought he was going to uh, get the victory there anyway, because technically, you know, that wouldn't really break all in the V-rated match, but I guess I guess he decided he wanted to try to get back up and grab a chair, do something he's comfortable with, but you see where it's gotten him now. He's still in peril. Kerman regains control now, still working on the leg, just smashing that right knee of the Necro Butcher with a steel chair. John Kerman now going to try to fold him up. One, two, and it looks like about a one and a half there as the Necro Butcher refuses to release relinquish his chance at the VCW Liberty Championship that easily. If she were counting an even three count, that would have been an, an easy three. What do you mean even three count? The match would have been over 20 minutes ago. Three is an odd number. And it didn't even start 20 minutes ago. That's how good John Kerman is. 
John Kerman in control. John here. Kerman would have beat him in the interview earlier in the match before Nick Raven came out there. Beat him in the interview, would you? Come on. Here he goes into the corner. Oh, and the Necro Butcher with the right hand just punches the chair, showing you how little he cares about his body. And he's going to block Kerman from hitting him. And the Necro Butcher limps into the corner now and starts chopping away the rights and punching John Kerman. And the Necro Butcher here throwing everything he has at the VCW Liberty Champion. Yeah, now look at this. A bulldog. Oh, no, on the chair. Bulldog right on the chair. Oh, come on. Could that do it? No. New champion. Two. Oh, and just like that, we were half a count away from the Necro Butcher in his first match in VCW winning the Liberty Championship. Can you imagine a guy named the Necro Butcher representing this fine country of, of the United States of America? What is wrong with that? There's plenty of people worse than the Necro Butcher. So we're going to advocate a person who butchers dead people as our Liberty Champion. That sounds great. He doesn't do that. that his name is the Necro Butcher. That doesn't mean he really does it. Why would you name? I mean, that'd be like saying that somebody's name is like the cat killer and they don't strangle cats. I mean, I would assume that that's what they would do. John Kerman picks up the Necker Butcher and almost a knee breaker right on the chair as the Necker Butcher's knee is in serious pain. Kerman's going to go to the spinning toll once again. Wait, Necker Butcher, he grabs him inside cradle. One, two, no. Spencer pulls out Steffi. Jerry, that is cheating. Blaine cheating. She just stole the toy. No, she was going to the outside. She was yelling at Spencer Chestnut. He had nothing to do with that. Butcher still has him. Allegations. Two, and he still gets two and a half. That, that was nearly ten seconds. The Necker Butcher should be your liberty. That is slander. That is libel. That is all those words that Spencer taught me about when we had our legal briefings. How is that possible? The Necker Butcher here, he grabs Spencer Chestnut. And a big right hand for his troubles. That's for costing him the title. Oh, wait a minute. Kerman with the helmet right to the head. It's legal in a V-rated match. Two, three, and, and Steffi. It's, it's legal in a VCW Liberty title match this time as John Kerman is still your Liberty Champion. A huge victory. It's oh, the Necro Butcher. Legal in the V-rated contest. Smashes him in the head with the helmet. Steffi reluctantly counts three. And John Kerman, by the skin of his teeth and with a little help from your friend, Spencer Chestnut is still the Liberty Champion. That's right, he's the Liberty Champion. Like I said before, what a better competitor to represent this, this fine country. John Kerman has beaten the international star. The, he was in a movie that was that where, where Mickey Rourke was nominated for an Oscar. Five minutes Butcher. ago, you were saying this guy's a nobody. I didn't say he was a nobody. I said he's, he's just not going to good as John Kerman. That's pretty much super simple. Well, and it's obvious because Kerman beat him. Well, on this night here at Liberty Lottery 2010, John Kerman by nefarious means holds on to the title and Jerry much to your delight he oh, has the mic junk yeah that's right that's right that's right, because she is the official, and if she's really an official like she's trying to pretend to be, at least for the last couple of months, she will put that belt around Kerman's waist, raise his hand, and show the whole world what a great champion he is. She's already counted three. That's uncalled for. A palm thrust to the face of an official, let alone a female. They get their hands off her. VCW security needs to get out there. Someone hits the ring here with a steel chair. And it looks like it's going to be... It's VCW up and comer. Well, yeah, Jay so Steel. real deal. Jay, Jay Steele came out here with a chair. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, the guy's got a broken neck. I don't know what he, what he, why he decided to come out here and chase after John Kerman. He's really playing with his own life when he does that. The real deal, Jay Steele, as you mentioned, breaking his neck just a couple of months ago prior to a VCW show here. Looks like the real deal wants the VCW Liberty title, or is he just coming to defend Stephanie's honor? You know, well, that remains to be seen. What's going to happen next? Is a guy in a wheelchair going to challenge John Kerman? Is a, is a little schoolgirl going to challenge John Kerman next year? John Kerman will beat anybody that challenges him for a championship. But I, I hate to laugh, but a guy with a broken neck thinks he can be Liberty Champion? Give me a break. I don't see why he couldn't. Jay Steele showing tremendous heart to come out here with an injury to try to help Steffi here. Great show of sportsmanship and class, helping her out of the ring.
No, 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 no. He said, what's up, Newport News? Virginia! Is 
VCW, we book a hero. In VCW, we book the kings. But in VCW, we make dreams come true. You stir the lottery, all those young wrestlers who have their dreams come true. Well, I'm here to make your dreams come true tonight, fans, because I'm being honest to you, gentlemen. I have been in contact with the Ring of Honor. I hold in my hand a contract, signed, delivered, and it's in my hands. And it says, because when you travel, you defend those belts. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time anywhere, in any ring, tonight's main event will be a title versus title shot for the belt of winners. The, you can pick it, you can pair it, but it doesn't change the thing. Tonight, it will be a title versus title shot. You leave and you won't work here again, and you won't get paid. We've seen some great action thus far. We saw C.W. Anderson essentially becoming the number one contender to the BCW title with a big victory. We saw the Bravados with a big impact in their debut defeating the Hall Stars. We saw John Kerman take out the Necro Butcher V-rated style to retain the Liberty title. But this show is called Liberty Lottery, and this is the Liberty Lottery match. That's right, and this is the one I told you, Blake, from the beginning I've been looking forward to. There have only been three Liberty Lotteries before this one, and every time it's been unpredictable whoever's won. Crotch was the winner of the first ever Liberty Lottery. Nobody gave him a snowball's chance in hell at walking out of that one was the winner. The very next year, his tag team partner, Chotch, and probably the big, one of the biggest upsets in BCW history, Chotch somehow made it to the end of the Liberty Lottery, won, and eventually got a, a heavyweight championship match later on, which, of course, he lost. Right. Uh, and then after that, the set, or Jason of the set, ended up winning Liberty Lottery the third time. You had half of a guy of a tag team winning the matchup, although both of them were working together against Phil Brown, so it was kind of illegal what they did. James Hall, the first guy out here right now. I feel sorry for whoever number two is, Blake. Whoever comes out there and has to take on James Hall, James is probably angry about what happened earlier with the Bravados. He's going to prove a point against whoever comes against him. Well, like you said, last year, Jason winning this one. And, of course, you can pick world title, Liberty title, or the tag team championships. Here we go. I think uh, I think our ring announcer, Mr. Matheny, is going to tell us who the next guy is. So Brandon Matheny, our ring announcer here. 
going to tell us who's going to take on James Hall to kick things off at Liberty Lottery 2010. I'm on pins and needles, Blake. I can't wait. This is amazing. The unpredictability. Oh, my goodness. That's got to be rigged. That's got to be rigged. Was Matheny doctoring with the things? Give me a break. Unbelievable there. Ross and James kicking things off. But, Jerry, of course, we know it's not rigged. That is the luck of the draw. The Liberty Lottery. One and two. James Hall followed by Ross Hall. And you got to think here, what are they going to do? You have to think they're going to work together. I mean, it's every man for himself. I'm kind of concerned, honestly. I mean, these guys are a great tag team. They were kind of agitated earlier about the fact that they didn't win. I, I worry that they may go at it. I mean, you're such good buddies with them. Do any of them have individual aspirations for individual titles? I mean, in wrestling, you've always seen brothers fight brothers. It's, it, it's been a, there's been a long history of that in professional wrestling. And, you know, I, like I said, I'm concerned. Maybe because as a tag team, they've been on a bit of a losing streak lately. You'll see them... Uh, they'll see them fight. Well, we haven't seen any friction with, with, amongst them thus far. Obviously, the punker is not out here with them, as this is the Liberty Lottery. You blamed him for their loss to the Bravada. Well, yeah, he's probably sitting in a chair facing the corner right now. They put him in timeout for all the stupidity that he perpetrated. Timeout? Come on. As Ross and James oh, no. here, they're I, arguing here. This is terrible. But Former two-time tag team champions fighting amongst themselves. Liberty Lottery 2010 is underway. The most unpredictable match in VCW. A true test of determination and the will to survive to see who can get their title shot at the championship of their choice. Ross and James Hall kick things off here as I am anxiously awaiting to see what they do. I just don't know, Blake. I mean, they, only one of them might be standing by the time number three comes out here because these two are just, I mean, they're talking trash to each other. They're setting up. They're kind of testing one another to cross the line, if you will. And they keep moving the line. Uh-oh. Oh, wait. And there's I a think push. The been crossed. Oh, and they always hook up here. Ross and James Hall. My money's on James Hall. For the whole thing? No, for this exchange here. For this exchange. Okay. Ross and James. And they hug. That is a wonderful Brothers Uniting. Oh, you oh, got to be that kidding is wonderful. Me. I, I should give that a standing ovation. What? This is a match. This is a match. They're supposed to wrestle. You Are you that sick? Are you that perverse that you want to see two brothers fight each other? They don't need to be chest bumping. They're wasting time. There's plenty of superstars in VCW that deserve this spot. And thankfully, we have a third one coming out now. That's right. And I feel bad for whoever it is. Looks like Tito Havana, a newcomer to VCW, is going to be making his debut in this contest. Wait, and I say I feel bad for the guy coming out right now, but from what I understand, Tito Havana is going to be, that's right, he's going to be accompanied by my good friend, Mr. Salazar. Oh, and there is Salazar. How fitting that one of your good friends and one of my least good friends in VCW, after our brief history... Listen, Salazar and I, Salazar and I, we get along now because Salazar's been giving me some, some free Spanish-speaking lessons. What does that mean? Well, you know that Spanish is becoming like a second language here in America, and it's important for us to be able to communicate with each other. So, so why Rosetta Stone? Why would I need to spend, waste money when I can have good old-fashioned effort? Oh, you ready to hear what he's taught me? Sure. Hola. Uno. Dos tres. What about the second day? That was seven lessons to learn. Oh, glad it was free. No. And here comes Tito Havana in. Look at him with a house of fire. But he's going to walk right into some right hands here. As you got to believe the halls are going to take it right to Tito Havana. Yeah, well, I guess maybe Tito Havana is going to take it to them. And we've got another name that's been drawn already. Already here. Rapid fire. G guys coming out, it looks like. The Hall Stars are now, you see, they've taken advantage of Tito Havana. They're starting to pummel him here. Here we go. Knees to the head there, wearing down Tito Havana. And here comes the countdown by Brandon Matheny as participant number four comes in here. Oh, nice move by Tito Havana to kick one of the Halls. That was fairly impressive. For, for someone I've never seen before, I mean, that wasn't too bad. More impressive than the Bravados? Uh, much more. I mean, because uh, oh, mostly because he has Salazar with him. Oh, of course. I mean, that just proves the guy's smart. Well, Salazar's obviously a difference maker with Mugabe the Cannibal. And here comes participant number four in the 2010 Liberty Lottery. 
That's right. It's the return of Tonic, Blake. Oh, Tonic. Here he comes, former VCW Liberty Champion. Tonic shows some athleticism in his action. A very talented young man. Doesn't exactly get along with the fans, but I don't think that's ever crossed his mind. No, not that I'm aware of. I mean, Tonic, was, he was one of the longest reigning Liberty Champions of all time. I mean, I'm sure that had to do with Spencer Chestnut, too, didn't it? I mean, duh. Yeah, yeah of course that had to do with Spencer Chestnut. Spencer what, Chestnut. Wait a minute. Great. Here comes the double team. The Hall's trying to get over Tito Havana. Speaking of Spencer, there, there, there is his magnificent presence outside the ring again. As the Hall stars here, two on one on Tito Havana as Tonic sporting somewhat of a new look, kind of lingering outside the ring, taking his time. And you know what? Even though that necessarily wouldn't be my motive, that's not a bad one. Look, it's, it's, a bad strategy. it's my understanding that Tonic, he took it very hard when he lost the Liberty Championship. He went into some intense training. He's now getting back on the blocks here. He's going to be he's gonna be a great competitor again, Blake. I guarantee you. I think Tonic is going to win the Liberty Lottery. I'm picking Tonic. So you went from Ross Hall to Tonic. No, I went from James Hall to Tonic. <sighs> but as you mentioned, Ross Hall could also win the Liberty Lottery. What about Tito Havana? Tito Havana has a chance. So right now, we have four men in this contest, Ross Hall, James Hall, Tito Havana, and Tonic here, sporting a new look, displaying a tremendous array of kicks as well. And they're all favorites to win this match. It's a every man for themselves. Wait, wait a minute, this looks like Kid VCW returning to action. Well, I'll tell you who's not gonna win the Liberty Lottery. What's wrong? Why can't Kid VCW win? Because he's Kid VCW. Kid VCW, look at the reaction he gets here. Uh, look at the reaction for Kid VCW. Does that kid not know what a tanning bed is? Jesus. Oh, leave him alone. Here he goes here. As it looks like Tonic's stomping away on him here. The Hall Star is trying to gain control. Picks him up here. Oh, and a power bomb. There's your kid VCW right there. And, but you got to give the kid some credit here. Making his debut in a very difficult match. The odds are stacked against him. Yeah, he's got three veterans and a smart guy out there with him. So, I mean, he's pretty much uh, out of luck right now, Blake. Right now he's out of luck and kid VCW getting hammered away on in the corner by Tonic. And it looks like one of the Hall Stars, possibly. The, the intelligent thing to do for kid VCW would be to turn around. Wave to his mom and his dad, who are probably sitting in the front row. They're probably so proud of him for being out there. Hey, mom and dad, I'm a wrestler. Oh, and look at Tonic there with the springboard somersault. Well, Tonic has got some high-risk offense. I don't know how smart it is to be bouncing off the ropes in a, in a lottery match. I agree with you there. He didn't go up top. That was off the middle rope. But Tonic, impressive athleticism. Really wowing this crowd. It looks like another superstar is getting ready to come out. Look at this. Look at this kid VCW. Look at him getting choked. And obviously this is legal because there's no referee. That's a metaphor for his career. He'll be on the bottom. Would you leave him alone? He's a young up-and-coming rookie. In a year or two, he could be right there with the Oh, ball. or he'll have a be paralyzed. A broken neck almost there for him with a brain buster. Very nice brain buster suplex. As here comes the countdown of participant number six getting ready to enter this fray. I think I have a new favorite, Blake. It's going to be Mr. Salazar's main man, his main charge from the jungles of Africa, Mugabe the Cannibal, and everybody watch out. You know what, Jerry? This might be my favorite. He's my favorite. You can't tell me. You, you just my favorite picked first. a favorite. He's my favorite first. What do you mean? I picked the Tonic, you picked James. No one can throw that guy over the top. I agree. Oh, That's why he's my favorite. As everyone clears that. not number. your favorite. Your favorite can be Kid VCW since you seem to like him so much. Oh, Kid VCW in the ring now with Mugabe and Tito Havana, as right now looks like Havana is on the same side as Mugabe based on the connection with Salazar, but can that last? I will find out. And look at Kid VCW. You gotta give the kid credit for going toe to toe with one, Mugabe. One chop. That's all it took to lift. The man's the four times his size. I'm just pointing it out. It was just one chop. And oh, here we go. He picks up. Like, this is my favorite move. Circle of life. That's right, it's the circle of life there by Mugabe the Cannibal. And, oh, drop, missile drop kick off the top by that? Tonic. Doesn't even phase him. And another drop kick. Tonic, you might have picked the wrong man to mess with. Have you seen anyone ever throw a missile drop kick from the top rope and see the guy just not even barely budge? Never. Never in my life. I've been watching wrestling for over 20 years. And I've never seen anything like that. It's like his body just absorbed it. He just looked at Tonic and kind of snickered at him. Tonic pounding away on Mugabe here. As now, it looks like, here we go, 
poetry and motion variation there by the Hall Stars on Mugabe. Anyone and everyone trying to take him out. Tonic teaming with the Halls here. He's going to springboard off as any everyone just trying to get a piece of the big cannibal. Well, it's smart, though, because you do have, you know, four or five guys out there in the ring right now. Everybody ganging up on the biggest guy in the match. It does make the most sense because they're going to want to try to wear down Mugabe if that's even possible because he's the biggest threat out there. And a bulldog by Tonic on Kid VCW and participant number seven getting ready to come out here, hopefully for Mugabe's sake. That will detract some tension away from him as Spencer Chestnut here directing some traffic, pointing towards the aisleway. And it looks like number seven is going to be... It looks like Phil Brown. Phil Brown, obviously, one of the most seasoned veterans in VCW, multiple-time champion, multiple-time tag team champion, almost the MVP of Vanguard Championship Wrestling, Jerry. You have to believe he'll be a factor here. Phil Brown has done everything in Vanguard Championship Wrestling. Phil Brown is a multiple-time heavyweight champion. Phil Brown has wrestled the top stars in VCW. He's wrestled top stars from all over the world. He is an international star. He is a television star. He's been everywhere. He has been everywhere. Phil Brown, working. you know what he hasn't done? Won the Liberty Lottery. He has never won the Liberty Lottery. He came very close last year. He was the, the runner-up in the Liberty Lottery last year. Well, you got to feel like Phil Brown will be a factor this year as he's a factor in just about every match. And look at him absolutely overpower Kid VCW, reversing the Irish trip face first into the turnbuckle. And ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever, it looks like we might see Mugabe and Phil Brown square off. And I'll tell you what, this is a matchup I certainly want to see. Well, I think the fans probably want to see it too. I mean, you got two huge guys out there about to go at it. Is Tito Havana about to mediate here? You I gotta think Havana is he aligned smart, with Mugabe in some way. I mean, he was smart, he'd just stay out of the way. Phil Brown just raked the eyes of Mugabe the cannibal. And he's throwing some right hands at him here as Tito Havana goes to Kid VCW as Tonic on the outside now. Why is Kid VCW still in there? Can someone just dump him out already? Has Tonic been eliminated? No, I think he went under the ropes. Why is Tonic walking around on the outside of the ring? Get in the ring. That is Spencer Chestnut's strategy, and I don't like it. There's no rules saying he can't do that. And here comes number eight right now. And it looks like it's going to be Chris Escobar and Jerry with Mugabe in this contest. You have to believe Esco's going to target him, and he goes right for him. I think Escobar's going to be a two-time loser. You won't mind us opinion, Blake. He lost the match earlier. He already has suffered from that spine buster from C.W. Anderson. I don't think he has a chance at winning the Liberty Lottery at this stage. Well, look at him firing away there on Tonic as Mugabe now. Mug oh, and look at him just pummel Kid VCW like it's his breakfast. <laughs> He's lucky Mugabe doesn't eat him. Kid I saw Mugabe eat a goat one time that was bigger than Kid VCW. Oh, I am certainly am glad I didn't see that. That must have been in catering earlier. As we are eight men deep here, no eliminations yet. We have the Hall Stars in there, Mugabe the Cannibal, Phil Brown, Tonic, Tito Havana, Kid VCW. And Chris Escobar is What is Tonic doing? Don't jump on the top rope. Tonic once again goes up top, hits a big splash on Mugabe. And now Kid VCW, Chris Escobar, and Tonic all pounding away on Mugabe. And our first elimination comes as the Hall Stars simultaneously toss Kid VCW. Uh, yeah, no surprise. Kid VCW first one eliminated from this matchup. And the, the ring rust must be affecting Tonic's brain because ordinarily you would not climb the top rope in a battle world. That just makes no sense. Tonic with the signature flips. Maybe once the boss went out. This match everybody up. in the ring is going after Mugabe the Cannibal. Wait, here we go. They're ganging up on him. This is the only way they're going to be able to eliminate this guy. What are they going to do? Seven on six on one here. And can they do it? Can they eliminate Mugabe Tito Havana? Even they did it. They did it. Mugabe is out. Mugabe is out. Blake, I was right. I was right. About what? About Mugabe. I was right. What about him? I was right that no one man could eliminate Mugabe the Cannibal. It took six guys out there to eliminate him. It took six, but you also said he was going to win. Uh, you know, I, it's a 50-50 chance there. Oh, come on. And here comes the next participant, and it looks like Bolo Young, and he goes right after Phil Brown. You got to think the fans want to see these two hook up as well. That's right. Bolo Young, look at him firing away on Phil Brown. Bolo here. After an impressive showing earlier on, was on the short end of the stick against Escobar and C.W. Anderson. And look at the 450 by Tonic. He takes another risk, but this one pays off again as Tonic really busting out the array of moves. I have never seen anybody attempt a 450 splash in a lottery match. I, 
I, I, I completely agree with you. It, it's unorthodox, it's risky, and I don't recommend it, but he pulled it off. Pretty soon Tonic's going to be walking across the top rope, you know, pr pretty soon dancing along there, you know, trying to strut and then do like a chop off the ropes. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised at this stage in the match. He just doesn't, seems to have no regard uh, for what he's doing right now. Maybe Spencer has given him some sort of ulterior motive to go out there and just cause some damage and remake a name for himself. It looks like Phil's going to help the Hall there. Looks like Ross or James, I can't tell. As Phil's gonna looks like trying to dump Tito Havana. Well, this is what's so great about these matches, Blake. They're unpredictable. There's chaos. There's es there's Escobar putting them all on Phil's back. That's right. You see friends become enemies. You see enemies become friends. I mean, there's just so much unpredictability in a lottery match, in, in a battle royal, in a match where you've got more than two people out there at one time, like we saw in the triple threat earlier. Oh, we got a countdown again. Here we go. Two, one, and Brandon Matheny gonna bring out number 10. You mean the guy that invented South Park? Matt, Trey Parker and Matt Stone? They're not in the Battle Royal. No, this is a different Matt Stone. Matt Stone making his VCW debut, trying to make an impact here in Liberty Lottery 2010. You gotta think the odds will be stacked against Matt Stone. I'm gonna correct you, this is not his debut. I remember this guy now. Matt Stone and, and Jay the, the Necklace Steel, whatever his name is, they wrestled Mugabe, and Mugabe beat both of them at the same time. Okay, so Matt Stone here, obviously getting taken out as a member of VCW security at the time. It was a match, Blake. They had a match. It was two on. He was still a member of security. He was not officially licensed wrestler. All right, whatever he was at the time, that's the same guy, Matt Stone. I remember that name. Matt Stone. And not just because I watched South Park. It's not the same guy. I know it's not the same guy. You know. So here we go. Now, Phil Brown, one of the only men standing. As he, it looks like Tito Havana and all of that, Jerry, was eliminated. So Salazar is 0 for 2. Well, you know, sometimes you get a bad run of luck. I mean, his guys were drawn early. What can you expect? Unfortunately, that's just the way things came for Mr. Salazar tonight. But at least, my good friends, what are you doing? Tonic once again up top of the missile dropkick. And Jerry, even though he continues to pull off these risks, he's getting the high reward. I don't know how that's possible. Bolo Young there displaying his knees and kicks. And you got to believe Tonic at some point with these high-risk moves is going to come back and bite him. Uh, you would think so. I mean, I'm going to assume so because he keeps doing it. It's like he, he gets away with it. He's like some kid that you don't reprimand right away. He does something bad, and then, you know, you look at him, and you look away, and then he does it again, and then the same thing keeps happening. Spencer needs to just smack him with a newspaper or something and tell him not to do that. And here comes number 11 now. Is this ring starting to thin out a little bit? A lot of the cream rice to the top here and number 11 obviously the fans picking here Brandon Matheny waiting it's one of the bravados it sounds like Lance Lance and Harlan bravado here getting an amazing chance here making their BCW debut tonight defeating the Hall Stars and getting their names thrown in the Liberty Lottery hat could they make it two for two that, that's possible so here we go as it looks like Phil pummeling Tonic here. <laughs> what am I saying? That's not possible. <laughs> the Bravados are not going to win this. Give me a break. Why I mean, not? They've already won once tonight. Because and you were picking the holes to win this? Because lightning doesn't strike the same place twice unless you're holding up a metal rod. Either way, now look at Matt Stone doing some work in the ring. Gotta love the, the young veteran. Young. He's a, he's a rookie, but he's not young. One of the few guys to break into this business late in his career. I was about to say, he took the, uh, the... His career is young. He took the Diamond Dallas Page philosophy of wrestling, evidently. He's broken in a little bit later in life, and that's fine for him. Best to him. I mean, he's probably like 20 years older than DDP was when he started, but that's, you know, just stay positive. Neither here nor there. So here we go. Matt Stone, in his VCW Liberty Lottery debut, was doing some work. He just got crotched there by Chris Escobar, a guy who has been running rough shot over this matchup here. Went right at Mugabe, was going at Phil, and Esco looking to make an impact after losing earlier. But Phil Brown, you got to think, at an advantage here. Phil did not wrestle yet tonight. Bolo Young's already wrestled, Escobar's already wrestled, the Bravados have wrestled, the Halls have wrestled. Phil, very fresh. That's true. Well, and Phil Brown's smart. He's a veteran. He's going to know when to pick his spots out there. I think Phil will probably learn from his mistakes last year. And it looks like Crotch, former 
winner of the Liberty Lottery. He's drawn a number halfway through, maybe a little bit more than halfway through our, our drawing here. Got to give it up for Crotch. That's going to be a big advantage for him, even though I don't really like him. And I don't, Why not? I don't really like it. His name is Crotch, and, and he's... He's, he's dirty. He, you know, he fights dirty. But I'll tell you what, this guy has really turned his career around in VCW but throughout the last couple of years. He won the Liberty Lottery. He's a former Liberty Champion. He's wrestled in some very high-profile matchups. Won some amazing tag team partner matches. is a homeless loser. A homeless loser who also won this match two years ago. That doesn't defeat the point that he's homeless. And that, by in turn, makes him a loser because you don't have a home. You obviously lost something. So here comes Crotch, the man from Santa Carla, California, one of the most unorthodox competitors in VCW, but he does get the job done. Has a lot of different variations to his offense here, but those are very basic with the basic right hand just going right at Bolo Young. Look at him here, driving him into the corner. We got a Donnie Brook in the corner. Well, Crotch is pretty dangerous. I mean, you got to be, I'll give credit where credit is due. I, he, like you were saying, he's a former Liberty champion. Uh, you know, him and Chach actually, they, un, un, you know, which was so surprising to me, but they defeated the veteran V-rated team of 66 and Idol X. Uh, they've had some big victories as a tandem, but, I, you know, I think Crotch might be a little bit distracted by his tag team efforts. I, I think that that's going to play against him in the lottery because you need to be out for yourself out there. Indeed it is, but remember, Jerry, if you win this match, you can take it for a tag team title shot. So if Crotch chooses to not go back after the Liberty title or really set a set side for the world title, you got to think him and, you know, Chach have a great shot at the tag titles. Well, that's what the set did. I mean, last year, Jason won, and then they, he obviously chose Lanflute as his partner, and they went after Assault and Battery and became tag team champions, and the rest is history, la di da di da But, you know, anything can happen out in the Liberty Lottery, as that, that has been proven. I, I just don't foresee it happening this year for Crotch. Well, here comes participant number 13, and it's going to be Chach, Jerry. You called it the tag team partner, so we've got a lot of teams in here. Now, look at Tonic going up top again, split-legged moonsault right on Crotch. This guy, he's taking all the risks. You know, one day, Blake, I walked out onto my front lawn. I was in my underwear. I picked up my newspaper. I took a look at it, and sitting on my front lawn was Chach in a box. What? He comes, he, he comes out of this box, and he's got his little cup with him, and he says to me, can you spare some change? You know what I said to him? You gave him a couple cents, right? I told him if he mowed my lawn, maybe I'd give him a nickel. And if he got that damn box the hell off my property, maybe then I'd consider giving it to him. You know what he said to me? He said, have you ever heard of charity? Charity? Some people always want something for nothing, Blake. And that's what Chach is. He's somebody who wants something for nothing. Well, these fans certainly love him here. Look at him filling up his cup. I'm sure he's filling up his cup because these fans are sheep. They, they love him. Blake, I could he's walk out there. one of the most popular superstars in VCW. Blake, I could walk out there with a cup and they'd fill it up for me. I doubt Hey, I got a cup. I'm homeless. Give me some change. And they'd be like throwing stuff at me. I can't confirm that. I don't think that's necessarily true. I do. I mean, I can make a nice little bonus doing that. Maybe next show I'll do that. Well, maybe BCW will move you to that side next time. What is that supposed to mean? That you tell me. Meanwhile here, this competition is heating up. The Liberty Lottery right in the middle here. Big time action. This ring is really filling up. There's a lot of people out there. They're fighting each other. They're kicking, they're scraping, they're clawing. Why is Tonic on the outside of the ring again for the 12th time? And there's Chach runs right into a big boot of the halls. Look at the halls here. Taking it to Chach and looks like Esco limping. And what is Spencer Chestnut waving there? The, the stick of Chach? What is he doing? Well, he's obviously ridiculing a homeless person. Which in my book, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know... The guy asks, asks for it. Why doesn't he just go get a job? And here comes number 15. Well, who opened the gimmick closet and let this kid out? Well, born in the USA, leading him to the ring. Here we go. Crowd starting to get amped for it. Oh, look at Tonic with the big splash in the corner. Wes Rogers, I remember this guy. He bristled one time like two years ago and then disappeared. Wes Rogers back with full force in VCW. Oh, and Phil pulls his bandana over his eyes and a big right hand. If I remember correctly, he embarrassed himself. That's why he hasn't been around since then. Would you call this hazing? Phil absolutely chopping Wes Rogers. He says, you welcome back to VCW. 
as here's Bolo Young just ripping the flesh. Can we acknowledge hazing? Is that a build we need to acknowledge that? Is that how? I, I assume the guy returns. He's going to get hazed by a veteran like Phil? E evidently. Veterans and hazing and... It's, just, it's chaos out there, Blake. It's chaos every time that there's a Liberty Lottery. And it's especially chaos in Liberty Lottery. Liberty Lottery 2010 here. The winner gets to choose a shot at the championship of their choice. World title, Liberty title, of course, the tag team titles. Last year's selection, we've seen them all thus far. What is going to happen here tonight at the Hellenic Center? And it looks like Escobar here. It's the Hellenic Center. I know you're not Greek, so you don't understand how it's pronounced. It is the Hellenic Center. It's not a le it's not the Leaning Tower. It is the Hellenic Center. Well, I'll go get Panthus to give me some instructions. Oh, he would love to come out and give you the instructions. <laughs> oh, and there's a big avalanche in the corner by Phil Brown, I believe on crotch as Phil has looked probably the best in this match thus far. Oh, he definitely has, but you know who has not come out here yet? Who? Let's see. The guy who's coming out next has not come out yet. Of course he hasn't come out next. Would you come on? Corey James making his return to VCW. A lot of guys here are either making their debut or return in VCW throughout this show, not only in the Liberty Lottery match, but Corey James here, a guy who I don't know too much about, he very well can make a huge impact. I've got to be honest with you, I have never seen Corey James in person before. I've heard of Corey James. I know that he has wrestled for VCW previously. It's been a few years. He's made a name for himself in other territories as well. He's coming back here, and what a great opportunity. He could upset uh, everybody in that match. He could be the winner of the Liberty Lottery. You just never know. And he targets Bolo Young right away. Interestingly well, enough, he yeah. uses the feet against Bolo Young. I don't know if that's the best move. Well, he's not going to win if he goes after Bolo Young. Let me preface it with that. I might have to agree with you on that one, but here he comes. Not too smart. And, oh, and he kind of difficult to tell what was going on there. Let's say Bolo Young has regained control. Well, there's just guys are fighting on the left, guys are fighting on the right, they're fighting in the middle. There's people fighting on the outside. I don't, Tonic's dancing around. He's probably going to, you know, go come off the top rope. He's probably going to come off the top rope again. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. And it looks like Tonic is on the outside, and he's angry. Tonic got eliminated, Jerry. It didn't look like it was off the top rope. And now he's attacking one of the Bravado brothers on the outside. Lance Bravado, the first one in. And well, yeah, they're both, they're both out, it looks like. I mean, they're fighting all the way to the back. So Tonic here taking out his frustrations on Lance Bravado, and you have to imagine some of these risks Tonic took earlier in the match might have hurt him now. That's a good possibility. I mean, I told you eventually he was going to come back to bite him. So here we go. This match starting to thin out here. We're getting to the well past the halfway point. Well, we're going to see. Here comes the countdown again. I don't know who's going to be next. I believe it's number 17 coming out now. What did he just say? It looks like we have a new superstar. BMC 123. I don't know too much about this guy, Jerry, but it looks like the crowd's getting behind him. Does it? It sounds like he's getting a reaction. B BMC123 making his VCW debut. Jerry, do you know anything about this guy? Uh, just what I'm seeing right now. What is he doing? He's getting in the face of someone walking around, but he's, he seemingly has a lot of personality and is very, he's very into this. He looks like Eminem swallowed Pavarotti. What is he doing out there? I don't know exactly what he's doing, but it looks like he's getting the crowd riled up. And I'll tell you what, he doesn't have a bad strategy because you can't get eliminated unless you're in the ring. He needs to get in there. I mean, this is just this is just stupid. What is he doing? He's he can't win the Liberty Lottery on the floor. Well, BMC one two three. Let's see if he has any tips for Chai. Is he rapping with a fake microphone? I certainly hope not. I can't even hear what he's saying. The mic doesn't. It's not plugged in. Well, let. Let the man speak. See, this is what I'm talking about. Paper Commissioner Pantis probably felt bad oh. for the kid let him in there. Oh, and Chach getting some shots in. It looks like Chach might have hurt himself. Might have hit the big one, two, three chain. Maybe. Yeah, you got a you got a homeless guy fighting out there with a, a wannabe Eminem, and then I mean, what what is going like, on here? Wes Rogers like, crawled out of the gimmick closet. It's almost like Eminem ate Adrian Adonis. Yeah. 
That's a pretty good comparison. So here, B BMC123 still yet to get into this contest. He acts like he's 10 feet tall. He's actually 10 feet wide. And here comes number 18, this Liberty Ladder here, getting down to the nitty gritty, Jerry. Anytime someone comes out here, it's going to greatly increase their chance of victory. No, you're right. I mean, you're right. Like, we're getting to the end. I mean, there's only a couple of people left here. Now, oh, and look at Phil Brown is wasting away at BMC 123. And you blame Phil. Phil's a professional. But you have professional to say, athlete. regardless of this guy's experience, he's very big. He's a very big individual, and you have to believe he could potentially hold his own weight wise with some of these guys. I have a new favorite, Blake. C.W. Anderson's making his way out here. There's only about three, four guys left. CW, you know what, Jerry? As many favorites as you've had in this match, this might be your best choice. C.W. Anderson winning earlier on, almost guaranteeing himself a title shot after defeating Bolo Young and Chris Escobar earlier on. And now Phil here trying to align himself with C.W. But a left hand takes down Big Phil Brown, and C.W. will have nothing of it. Well, you know, nine is my lucky number. You know, it's the month I was born. Uh, you know, CW is my ninth pick, I think, at this stage. I think I was keeping track. So I think that, yes, I'm going to settle with CW. I believe that he's going to win this matchup. I guess that rationale will be fine here. It's a lucky number. If I, had a, if I played baseball, I'd have it on my jersey. It could be worse. As everyone here circling around, as looks like... They're all attacking CW because they they must have heard that I said he was my favorite. So now, the Bolo Young has been eliminated, ladies and gentlemen. So Jerry, one of your favorites. Yeah, you've got you've got Corey James in there. You've got uh, big big MC. Uh, you know whatever his name is, PN News. You got the Hall Stars out there, and then we got Shotch. We've got Crotch, of course, Phil Brown. Oh, and look at the big super kick, CW. That's gonna be a one, two, three count on BMC one, two, three. If this was a pinfall, Ray Storm, another veteran drawing a late entry. That's pretty good. Ray Storm back in the VCW fold. Last time we saw Ray Storm, he was getting embarrassed by Santa Montana. Then why are you gonna bring that up? What do you mean? Why you gotta bring that? He up? tried to ruin Christmas for all the fans in VCW. Santa Montana was there to bring simple cheer and joy, and he just he couldn't handle it. Ray Storm, but let's not let's not. Fight. Oh, and there is a wicked spine buster by CW Anderson. Look at the power and strength of CW jacking him down. Let's never speak of Santa Montana again. Ray Storm is a former VCW tag team champion. Ray Storm is a, an accomplished athlete. He is a veteran. He is just a good guy. And if and Ray Storm needs to go out. There. Good right. guy. Yeah. Phil Brown showing him a good guy right now as he just taking him down with rights and lefts. And look at BMC123 putting the boots. I can't exactly see who he's taking down there. It looks like Corey James is crotch and BMC123 are looking to have the with Corey James and crotch just slaps him. Down goes. The, any young guys in this match need to watch out for Ray Storm because, as you may remember, when uh, Landon Thomas tried to go out there and, and flippity do over him and got some kind of screwy win over Ray Storm, Ray Storm responded by trying to hang him. He did. He did. Landon Thomas almost had serious issues. And we haven't seen Landon Thomas since then. Well, you're right. You're absolutely right. Ray Storm and has a mean streak. He put him out, and so you need to be you need to be cautious of that. Ray Storm, obviously, yeah. Besides, I'd say at this point, besides the C.W. Anderson or Phil Brown, has to be considered the favorite. I, I think C.W. Anderson is the favorite. I think I think Phil Brown's been in there a little while now. Wait, here comes C.W. trying to help out Crotch. BMC 1, 2, 3. Though a young rookie, he definitely is a very large individual. And it's going to be tough to dump there. And look at the unorthodox style of BMC 1, 2, 3 taking out some of these competitors. And now Harlem Bravado's coming out here. we got the other Bravado. I mean, his, his, his partner, his brother, I mean, he's gone. So it looks like Lance Bravado now. There's Harlem Bravado. This is Harlem. This is Harlem Bravado. So Harlem Bravado coming out now. I should have done my homework. I mean, I was I didn't expect for them to beat the All Stars. And they're obviously now he's in a one-on-two situation. His brother Lance was eliminated earlier. Of course, we have Ross and James in there. Off the top, look at Crotch taking out Ray Storm. Excuse me, Chach taking out Ray Storm. 
So wait, you've got two tag, two full tag teams in there. You got one brother who's probably lost without his other one. You got a rookie in BMC one, two, three, and of course the Wiley veterans and Phil Brown yes. and CW Anderson. Speaking and, of hazing, and this won't be too good for BMC one, two, three. As oh my goodness, Phil Brown chopping the chest away. As I believe BMC might have to take a break from the recording studio after that one. We can only hope. The crowd certainly liked this rapping. As here he comes again, Phil Brown, one more time, and this one just as hard. You can hear it in the booth, Jerry, the thunderous smack. Yeah, you can see the ripple effect on his chest and his back. I mean, Phil Brown hit him so hard. Indeed he did, and keep an eye on the corner there. It looks like Harlem Bravado I was pounding. about to yell tsunami, Blake. I was so worried. Oh, wait a minute. It, Harlem Bravado pounding away in the corner there on one of the Hall Stars. And thank God and, right, they got him out of there. And he was simply dumped over the top, so the Hall Stars getting their revenge in this match. Meanwhile, BMC123 gets dumped, and this ring really thinning out. The next entry to Liberty Lottery is Diamond Victor Griff. Harlem Bravado and BMC123 have both been Well, Diamond Victor Griff is the next entrant in Liberty Lottery. We saw Griff make a huge impact the last couple of shows. Well, Diamond Victor Griff, Blake, I mean, he's, you know, a former partner of Phil Brown's. I'm going to see how that fares in a few moments. As you know, that he is a former BCW Tag Team Champion as well. Yeah, we've seen Victor Griff, obviously, winning the Assault and Battery the Tag Team Championships there, along with Carlos Hotness. The reason, Phil Brown, we saw them as a well-oiled unit for many, many months. And I don't like Griff's new attitude. Why not? Because he wasn't getting anywhere with that unit. He's now on his own. The crowd's behind him, and he's really he wasn't getting state. anywhere. He was a tag team champion. And then he lost. That was his own fault. Now he's gaining a lot of steam. I really think Diamond Victor Griff, big things in store for him in BCW. Well, you see, he's fighting there. Diamond Victor Griff is, or no, he's getting number 20. Oh, and there goes CW. Dumped to the outside. Phil Brown takes the low road. CW eliminated. And Jerry, even it's though he won thing. that match early, he might, he might have just lost out on number well, one. Well, that's, it's a good thing that James Hall was my pick to win this match. Oh, would you please? That was my first pick. Yes, it was. But then you picked Ross, and then you picked Tito, and then you picked Mugabe. I never picked Ross. And I never picked Tito, but I did pick Mugabe. Either way, I was only saying Mugabe to throw you off. Oh, I'm sure. Either way, the big story here has to be C.W. Anderson getting eliminated, Phil Brown, the freshest man in this thing, as number 21 getting ready to come out here. Josh just got eliminated, Phil Brown just tossed him out. And Jerry, I believe this is the last participant, number 20. There goes Corey James, he's gone. Corey James is gone late. Look how thin this got as we're down to only three men, but technically four. Yeah, Jerry. four, the punker's coming out here the, great. The, yeah, the punker draws number 21, and you talk about luck. Could he have gotten a better number? Yeah, he's going to come out here and just probably screw it up for the All-Stars now. How can you say that the punker here has filled with a oh, get him big come power on. bomb? Oh, watch out, come on. Oh, get wait, no, all three of them going to go out. Wait a minute. The Halls tumble to the floor. Phil tumbles to the floor. Wait a the minute. The Punker's in the ring. Wait a minute. It, is this was over? The, was the... The bell is wrong. Was that the bell? Wait a minute. Does that mean... Could this be? Jerry, the, this might be the, the biggest upset in VCW history. It's official. The Punker has won Liberty Lottery 2010. Was he even in the ring? He was in the ring. He was entering the ring as... The, Ross Hall, James Hall, and Phil Brown all tumbled to the outside. Jerry, he wins the match. I, I've never seen anything like this. I mean, I haven't either. Phil Brown doesn't seem to be too happy about it, and these officials are trying to get in there between it. The, the punker has won. Let me get this straight. The punker, the, the roadie, the guy who sets up the mics and does the, mic, the sound tests and does the, all this. The guy things. who you said cost the halls the match of the Bravados earlier. Well, he did. But he won the Liberty Lottery. He just won the Liberty Lottery. What an opportunist. 
He, he absolutely, the punker making the most of this opportunity here. And you know what, Jerry? He did it without Ross and James. And what, what is this? What do you mean without Ross and James? If Ross and James had not sacrificed themselves to eliminate Phil Brown, the punker would have never won Liberty Lottery. The punker here celebrating, but I don't understand why are Ross and James in the ring jumping up and down? Because they know what's going to happen. The punker's not a wrestler. He's just he's a out there in tights. He's just a roadie. He's going to very obviously abdicate his his shot to the All Stars. How is that obvious? So Travis Bradshaw, president of VCW here, discussing this one, but Jerry, the punker, has won Liberty Lottery. I am in shock, Blake, and I, I really don't know what's going to happen at this stage. I guess, well, I know what's going to happen. The punker's going to give the title shot to the All-Stars, but, but, but still, what a surprising end to the Liberty Lottery. I would have never predicted that. Each year, it seems that this matchup, this battle royal, just gets more and more unpredictable. We saw half of a tag team win last year. We've seen up and comers win. But at the end of the day here, the punker's gonna win. Which title will he pick? I'm sure we'll find out soon. Welcome back to Liberty Lottery 2010, Jerry, right on the heels here of the big title versus title match, fresh out of the Liberty Lottery matchup, but we saw the big time women's encounter. That's right, and Sarah Del Rey, an accomplished women's wrestler, one of the best in the world, believed to be maybe the best women's wrestler in the world, is going to be taking on Daphne, who is not just an international star, uh, a household name in, in some circles, Absolutely. but she but she is also an amazing athlete as well. Indeed she is. We should see a nice mi mix of styles here. BCW really starting to emphasize the women's division in the last few months here. This is probably going to be the biggest contest we've seen. This is the first time this has ever happened as well. We should point out the first time that Daphne and Sarah Del Rey have ever locked up, and it's right here in VCW. Very good point there, but Jerry, just a few moments ago, the punker winning Liberty Lottery 2010. I'm still in shock. I feel like I'm being punked. <laughs> it's amazing, though, but the punker wins that, but now he has to quickly turn his attention. Where does he go from here? Does he find a partner to go for the tag titles? Does he go for the Liberty title? Or does he set his sights for the highest goal in the world? I, you know, honestly, I, I, I don't know what he does. I think I think if he were smart, he gives his, his title shot to the All-Stars. I think that's what he does. That, that makes no sense whatsoever. They were in the match and lost. What do you mean? What does that have to do with anything? It just, they, they, they'll obviously be able to beat the set. They beat Regardless them of how times. many people he eliminated, the punker was the last man standing. Well, well, I guess we'll have to wait and see, Blake. I mean, I, my, I think the, logically the best thing for him to do would be to take the guys who brought him to the dance, the ones that he does all the, all the legwork for, the all-stars, the ones that really deserve a title shot. He needs to give it to them. That's what I think he needs to do. Well, that remains to be seen, but here we go. Cameo is your referee, Sarah Del Rey and Daphne, as Jerry pointed out, for the first time ever, and it will be held in a VCW ring. This should be a great one. Bell sounds. This one's underway, and Daphne... Daphne here and Sarah Del Rey, as we thought this might be a little bit of respect, they get a little shoving match. Well, you know, things are going to get heated because both of them have made good names for themselves. There's a lot of uh, publicity surrounding this matchup uh, because of the fact that it's the first time it's ever happened. We do have a great crowd on hand tonight. It is jam-packed. As here we go, nice reversals here. Daphne kind of captures her with a, some sort of like an arm bar. She's not letting Del Rey move her arms. 
very nice here. Well, and this is part of the feeling out process here, Blake. They're gonna they're gonna take it easy at first. They're gonna try to lock on some holds. They're gonna see. They're testing each other's strength. They're checking to see for weaknesses. It's very methodical. Indeed, it is. Backs her into the corner. Cameo calls for the break. She gets a clean one here. As Daphne, Jerry, I have to believe we're pretty soon. Pretty, we're gonna hear a scream. I'm sure eventually. I would think so. You know, in Jurassic Park, when they talk about how the animals are like testing the fence. How they're testing the raptors are testing for weaknesses. They're going at it. That's kind of like what this feel out process is like. They're testing each other for weaknesses. They're checking the knees, the arms, the elbows, uh, the necks. They're seeing where, where they can attack. And Daphne has obviously discovered that that arm appears to be a good point of reference for her to attack on Sarah Del Rey. Indeed she does. And she has her in a nice arm bar here. Del Rey tries to get out. Nice reversal. Sarah Del Rey gets up and has her own arm bar. And Daphne reverses it here into a wrist lock. Who are you picking, Blake? Who, who's your favorite in this one? I don't know, Jerry. You know, I haven't seen too much of Del Rey. I've obviously seen Daphne for years. Oh, stop being a politician. Tell me, which one do you think is going to win? Is it going to be Daphne or Sarah Del Rey? Who's going to win? I'm going to have to go with the screamer here, Daphne. I'm going to have to go with what I know and what I'm familiar with. Well, Daphne's definitely been around a little bit longer. She's got some more experience in the ring there. But Sarah Del Rey, she's an international star uh, for a reason. She's perceived to be the greatest women's wrestler around for a reason. It's because of how talented she is. And it's because she's more brutal than some of the men that get in the ring. Indeed, she is. Nice cartwheel out of it there to get into the wrist lock. And it looks like Del Rey's going to gain control. A big kick to Daphne's face. Sarah Del Rey here. Yet to show off that amazing technical ability, but as you mentioned, she is world-renowned, so I assume we're going to see some of the best women's wrestling in the entire world. Oh, you will eventually. I mean, once you, I mean, you're seeing part of it right now, the strategy at least of it, and now you're going to see, look at this maneuver. Oh, nice backbreaker there on Daphne as Del Rey gains control as she's trying to put away Daphne, which would be a very high-profile win for Del Rey. Oh, very much so. A very crisp backbreaker, very well executed. The thing, that's something that you come to expect when you see Sarah Del Rey step into the ring. Indeed, as she's going to, oh, look at Del Rey, you're driving the foot right into the midsection of Daphne. Looks like Cameo's calling for the break. She's not going to get, or she's finally going to break. But Del Rey doing some damage here, and then a big headbutt to the lower back. And it looks like that might be the region she's going to target. We should point out to the Cameo, the former VCW Women's Champion. Oh. She actually retired with the championship. Uh, you know, she's the referee for this matchup. She knows what it is like to be in a big high-stakes matchup, especially within women's wrestling. So a good choice by our committee, I will say, to be out there and to be refereeing this match. I do agree with you there. Cameo very qualified for this one. Del Rey with the side salto backbreaker. Nice job there. As she's now going to put the pressure on the back of Daphne. Going to grab her again here. What she going to do? Picks her up and looks like a oh. modified chicken wing. Oh, and she's got her on her back. Oh, come on. Oh, That's man. The, That's the, like a modified chicken wing there. That's more than a modified chicken wing. Gory special. Is that, is that a gory special? I, it's, I, it's some kind of special. She's stretching her. like I mean, she's trying to make Daphne's head touch the back, the back of her heel. Very innovative move there. A modified gory special by Sarah Del Rey. As Daphne here, a world of hurt. And Del Rey continues to show off that amazing oh, technical oh, ability. No. Oh, she's stretching her even further. Look at Del Rey here, modifying the move oh. to put pressure on a different body part, and the strength to just keep Daphne up. And this is an amazing display of technical ability by Sarah Del Rey. Daphne's about to snap in half like a rubber band. Uh, we might want to stop this match before we have to call the paramedics. I'm surprised Cameo is not called for this one yet, but Daphne's still hanging around there. But what a submission by Sarah Del Rey, the modified gory special. As Daphne here, oh, look at Daphne, flips out of it. What's she going to do? Inside cradle. Could this be it? One, two. Oh, kick out by Del Rey. Daphne using her head. Heads up move there, but couldn't get the cover as Del Rey with a big kick to the face. Yeah, well, where was her head on that one? Uh, Sarah Del Rey just kicked her right, right in the ribs, it looked like, and then took her down. I'd imagine Daphne has to be somewhat disoriented after being put in that modified gory special for so long. Well, you would think so. I, I, I could see that because Sarah Del Rey, like I stated before, she's a very tough athlete, athlete a very strong athlete. Athlete, putting somebody in a maneuver like that. I mean, she could put it one of the any of the male wrestlers in that move and they'd probably pass out. So you gotta give it to Daphne for not for not, you know, letting it take her out of the matchup. I do agree with you there. Del Rey ramming Daphne's head into the turnbuckle and chokes away now. Cameo's gonna definitely need a break there. One, two, 
and finally she's going to break it up. But Del Rey has been going to work on Daphne's back, and I'd have to imagine she'll go back to that. And look at this. Look at this strength here by Sarah Del Rey. She's putting her upside down in the corner. Only bad things are going to come out of this. The tree of woe for Daphne, and woe is Daphne as Del Rey kicks her in the gut. Look at the blood rushing to the head as Daphne's hung upside down as Sarah Del Rey having her way with the screamer. You know, Sarah Del Rey, I like her attitude. She, she doesn't care what these fans think about her. She does not at all. They're trying to taunt her. They're trying to say nasty things to her because she's got Daphne in a precarious position here. And, and she doesn't care. And she's taunting Daphne there, a clubbing forearm blow. Look at her just yell in Daphne's face as Daphne can't get out of it here. Looks like Cameo is going to try to help her. Del Rey moves her. Oh. But look at Daphne. Heads up there with the kick. Turns it into a, a flip. Flips her up and over. Reverse DDT. Nice job by Daphne. That was a nice counter. I'll give credit where credit is due. Looked like she might want to go for the sliced bread, but she just flipped it into the reverse DDT. Del Rey's going to charge. Oh. Daphne with the spin kick takes her out. Big mistake by Sarah Del Rey. It's only because she's disoriented from that reverse DDT. So Daphne now pounds away on Del Rey, finally in control. European uppercut backs Del Rey in the corner. Here comes Daphne, and a big charge and a forearm shot to the face. And Daphne here, look at her take the anger out on Sarah Del Rey. Well, Daphne is definitely building some momentum here. She's got a second wind. I guess, you know, she, she's finally been able to catch her bearings after getting put in that, that horrible maneuver that she got put in. I mean, it was like a medieval torture device. Daphne goes up top. She's signaling to the crowd. Del Rey is down. She might be wasting her time here. She needs to be careful. And she drops him down with a big elbow on the side of Sarah Del Rey. She's going to cover up one, two, hooks the leg. But that will not enough to put down the international no, superstar. No, it's going to take more than that to take down Sarah Del Rey. As Daphne in control once again. The kick to the midsection. She's setting her up here. Suplex possibility. Del Rey is reeling. Daphne here trying to get position. Del Rey gets out of it. Del Rey double underhook. What's she going to do? Front chancery. Daphne slips out. Backslide possibility. Del Rey tries to use her size to block it. Daphne going to the ground. She's going to eventually get Del Rey. No. For a backslide. It looks like this. Is, she's trying to get her pin to the canvas. She's got it. One, two. Oh, and two and three quarters. But look at Daphne. Hold on. Look at this. They're back to back now. Flips around Del Rey with a kick and oh. down goes Daphne. That was brutal, Blake, and it looks like uh, Del, Del Rey's back in charge again. Wait a minute, she's got her hooked, her double underhook. Double What's underhook. The Here, she's got her. Oh, and she flips her up That's and over. That's it. That's it. What a move. Two, three. Good night, Daphne. Sarah Del Rey drops the death ray on Daphne for the one, two, three. Impressive VCW debut for Sarah Del Rey. As soon as she locked in the death ray, you could write the record book right then and there. There was no way that Daphne, even with all of her experience and all of her abilities, there was no way she was going to kick out after that one. An impressive effort by both of these young ladies. But Sarah Del Rey, like you stated, Blake, she's the undisputed winner of this matchup. Indeed she is. That front chancery into the flip. Suplex variation, the death ray, tremendous move. Sarah Del Rey winning her BCW debut, Jerry. You have to imagine she will be back within the BCW women's ranks. Here's the match that I've been waiting for. It's time for the kings, the kings of wrestling. Claudio Castagnoli, Chris Hero, 
the greatest tag team in the world in my estimation, and I, at risk of sounding like a hypocrite, I would like to see in this instance, in this instance only, I want to see Ring of Honor teach the VCW tag team champions how to win. Interesting you say that, because I thought earlier in the night the Hall Stars were your favorite team. Uh, they're my favorite team in VCW. But my favorite team in the universe are the oh, Kings of Wrestling. Kings of Wrestling, of course. Kings of Wrestling tag team champions in Ring of Honor. Claudio Castagnoli, Chris Hero, these two men, tremendous athletes, world-renowned competitors, and they came to the best place for tag team wrestling in the southeastern part of the country. VCW, the set, Lance Lude, Jason, the VCW Tag Team Champions, Jerry, I don't think they face a tougher test yet. Well, I would agree with you there as far as the abilities of Lance Lude and Jason. However, it's obvious that they, they don't really take them that seriously because they only brought one of their tag team titles with you. As they stated before, one Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship in their minds is more valuable than two VCW Tag Team Championships. How can you possibly say that? That's what they said. I'm just repeating what they said. Well, that's why they are Aaron and call themselves the kings of wrestling, but they certainly have the ability to back it up in the ring. And ladies and gentlemen, two crowd favorites, if there ever were crowd favorites, Lance Lou, Jason, The Set, these guys hailing from the Metropolis, Jerry, finally getting the tag team straps after almost two years of chasing them. Can they hold them here in this very rare title versus title match? Well, you know, I've heard a lot of people call the set the heart and soul of VCW. You know, these fans certainly seem to love the set. I'm sure they sell some nice t-shirts and merchandise. And, you know, I'm sure the commissioner loves to talk about how much he loves the set. Well, that, that that's fine. That That's all fine and well, Blake. But the bottom line is, at the end of the day, the set, they may be big names in VCW, but the Kings are big names everywhere in the world. They're big names in Japan, they're big names in the United States, they're big names in Canada, they're big names in Mexico, they are big names everywhere that you can think of to name. And I, I think that their wealth of experience and their notoriety is it's just going to overshadow the set in this matchup. Well, it very well might play an advantage for them, but if the set can pull off this victory, you have to imagine Lance Lute and Jason will now be considered one of the top tag teams not only in the United States, probably the world. Well, yeah, I mean, if that happened, I mean, if I, if I flapped my wings and started to fly, I'd probably end up on the local news, but, I mean, that, that's never going to happen. Would you stick to the task at hand? Well, what's the task? What are you talking about? I thought it was a very good comparison. We are talking about a wrestling match. And a very good one at that here. Tag team titles on the line. Well, but we're also talking about promotion. We're talking about what's what's going to help the set, what's going to help the Kings of Wrestling. You know, I mean, it's certainly not going to help the set if the Kings of Wrestling go in there and kill them. Uh, you know, I mean, they're going to they're going to have to wrestle the best match of their life if they really want to make a name for themselves. This is this is do or die for the set. You know, they, they've come through VCW. They've wrestled some really great teams. Don't get me wrong. They've beaten some really great teams. But then again, they've never wrestled a team with the knowledge and the, and the wherewithal of the Kings of Wrestling. And I'm probably going to agree with you there, Jerry, is there's not a team in BCW that can really stack up to the Kings of Wrestling, but Claudio Castagnoli just kicking Lance Lude and showing him no respect before this match begins. They've got a size advantage. They've got a strength advantage. They've got an intelligence advantage, most important of all to the Kings of Wrestling, in my opinion. I think the Kings of Wrestling are going to make short work of the set. I think it's going to be the biggest upset tonight. I'm looking forward to it because the Hunker won Liberty Lottery. I think this is good. Well, I mean, I say upset. I mean, you know what I mean. Upset in the sense that I think all these fans are going to be crying on their way home later tonight because they wanted to see their local heroes, the set, beat the Kings, and it's not going to happen. That remains to be seen here. The referee assigned for this main event title versus title match, Bobby Cruz. The bell sounds, this one is underway, Jerry. Kings of Wrestling and the set. Chris Hero here shouldn't be worried about Lance Lude. He should be worried about Jason in the ring. Well, Chris Hero's upset because earlier earlier tonight, Jason compared him to the lead singer of Nickelback. I'd be offended if somebody compared me to that guy as well. So Chris Hero has a reason to be upset. They look similar. They do not look similar. How can you say that? They, they look nothing alike. In what way do they look alike? I bet you Chris Hero is ten times the singer that What's-His-Face is. Well, maybe Chris Hero will burn it to the ground tonight as uh, Jason here will get locked up with Claudio Castagnoli to get things going here as the Kings of Wrestling need to not 
act like the set is a second-rate tag team because not only are the tag team champs in VCW, we've seen them put some very competitive contests out in Ring of Honor and in other parts of the country. That's for certain, Blake. And look at this. What does Jason think he's doing? He's trying to match strength with Claudio Castagnoli. That's just not going to work. And you know what? I'm going to agree with you there. Castagnoli has a size advantage, a clear strength advantage. And I'd have to imagine if Jason's going to try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and strength to strength with this guy, he's not going to win. And Claudio Castagnoli's got the strength of Dolph Lundgren in Rocky IV. This guy is a, is a tremendous athlete. He, he's, he's really... He, I mean, look at this. There's no way that Jason can even compare to the physique that is on Claudio Castagnoli. There's no way. That is true. That's why the set are going to have to rely on double team maneuvers and the way that they can just use the crowd to their advantage and that's part of the reason they're the tag team champions. Now wait a minute, what did he do? Look, he stepped back there so Claudio, Claudio basically beat himself in that exchange but then again he wasn't expecting Jason to do something he didn't nefarious. Cheat. He didn't cheat. Yeah, he was a quitter. That was worse. He quit. Oh, he, he, could, he could tell that he could not out maneuver or out power Claudio Castagnoli, so he gave up. He stepped back and tried to make. And she's trying to get in the head of Claudio, but it's not going to work. And here comes Jason grabbing the side headlock on Claudio Castagnoli, a European star. This guy is, you know, he's been around the world. You know, this guy really gets the job done as Jason off the ropes here. He cannot move Claudio as he runs right into him. You see this clear size advantage by Castagnoli. And look at that, though, running the ropes, and he can't move Jason either. Now, well, that's kind of a surprise to me. I, I mean, Jason doesn't have that uh, nice center of gravity there that, that's keeping him stagnant, I guess, in the ring. Here comes Claudio again. Claudio off the ropes, and Nobody's Jason fucking. challenging him once again. Claudio slaps him. Jason off the ropes. Claudio goes for the clothesline. Ducks under and a big shoulder tap by Jason. Wow. I, I gotta admit, Blake, that was impressive. I never thought I'd see that. I, I'm surprised they knocked Claudio off his feet. In the corner here, Lance Lude and an axe handle as the double team's mo moves are working for the VCW champs early on. Lance here, I wouldldn't recommend a side headlock. Yeah, on that's that. not, you know, Claudio could inhale and lift Lance Lude up, you know, with, with just the, the mere breathing in of his lungs. And the tag into Chris Hero here. And the Kings of Wrestling in control hero throws down Lance Lou there. Nice job. That was almost a back body drop variation. Hero grabs him up. I feel bad for Lance Lou. Grabs him, puts him on his, looks like a, going for a slam. Lance here grabs him with a side headlock. Aren't you going to ask me why I feel bad for Lance Lou? Why do you feel bad for Lance Lou? Because he's about to get destroyed by both of these guys. Look at this. Chris Hero not even taking that headlock seriously. He stood up while he had him in the headlock. And Lude, I would not suggest going strength for strength with either of these men. <laughs> I think it's funny, too, that he's trying this. But you got to admire the heart and determination of Lance, though. Not backing down from any challenge. Oh, and look at him baiting Hero in and just drop kicks him in the knee, trying to take him out. Great job by Lance Lude. He goes up. Wait. And spins around into a spinning head scissors, and Lance Lude and Jay Sin are on fire early on. Those boots are illegal. He got those, that, those furry things in Hero's eyes. That's why he was able to take him down with that move. Oh, look at that. Just a snaps it off of Hurricane Rana. Another one. Oh, he only gets a one, though. But another near fall for Lance Lude. Who wears furry boots anyway? Tries it again. Hero flips him Ooh. around and a big knee to the head. Very interesting maneuver there by Chris Hero. Chris Hero is an innovative competitor, Blake. Like I said before, he's got all these different experiences. He, the, the man adapts his style to whoever he's in the ring with. That's what makes a great competitor. That's what makes a champion. I guess a that's world tag team wrestling. wrestling huh? That's right, a world tag team champion. And he flips out of the double team suplex there. Loot off the ropes. Here we go. And he passes him on to Claudio, but Claudio's going to get nailed with the head scissors takedown. Oh, and look at that. He just pushes him through the ropes there, and it looks like Hero almost baseball slides Claudio. Off the ropes, Jay Sid, big back body drop on Lude, up and over, he's going to take out the Kings of Wrestling. Like a Matheny out there, better watch out, they make him flipping over on top of him next. And there goes Jay Sid now to the floor, and the, and the champs, the set here, are rocking and rolling against Ring of Honor champs, the Kings of Wrestling. I, like I said, Blake, I mean, I am impressed thus far that they're able to, look at this patented offense by the set, this double team battering ram. The battering ram, here it comes, Jay Sid sets up the roll through, the big spear, down goes Claudio. And the set now in firm control, Sin cuts off Hero. And you gotta be impressed with the set, how they're keeping up. Oh, look at this one. Oh, and look, the Kings did their homework. They've seen that move before. They've probably seen it on, on our YouTube site. And then you saw Chris Hero was right in place. Boom! 
booted Jason in the face, and now Lance Lude is in a lot of trouble. Unbelievable there, kicking him to the outside. I like Chris Hero's idea of getting rid of the larger Jason. Now I'm going to focus on Lance Lude. Well, yeah, obviously that's a smart move. You want to pick the, I don't want to say the weaker link, but the weaker link. You want to pick the guy who's smaller, the guy who, who the fans love, the guy who gets a, a lucky break every once in a while, but realistically he can't absorb. There's no way he can absorb as much punishment. And look at Hero here just dragging Lude by one leg. It's almost an insult here. That's just absolutely uncalled for. What's he going to do? Ooh. Those are some patented Claudio Castagnoli uppercuts. And Hero warned the set about that. He warned the set in that interview. He explained to the set that if they got in the ring tonight, they were going to receive some forearms, some uppercuts, and at the end of the night, they were going to go home embarrassed, beaten, broken, defeated. And it looked like a variation there of Claudio's very European uppercut. As we know, Claudio represents his continent very proudly as he picks up Lude here and has him in a kind of a bear hug variation and you know what Jerry I can't argue with this strategy is Lude very small he can suck the life out of him quickly oh yeah I mean if he wanted to right now he would just snap Lance Lude in half just like a popsicle stick he would just break him just like that Lude fights out of it here Lude off the ropes snap power slam very nice job by Claudio Castagnoli and these kings of wrestling here I might not like their attitude but they are certainly impressive and what's Jason doing in the ring? Come on. He's breaking up the pin. He's trying to keep those VCW tag titles. Yeah, and he, and he has no re uh, regard whatsoever for his partner. And that is not an illegal tag there. Chris Hero is just tagged in behind Bobby Cruz. You can do that. You cannot do that. The referee needs officially... They just did it. They just did it. And Bobby Cruz looks like he notes the tag. And there's a, a back senton there by Chris Hero. One, two, and that's only going to get a two count here as Jason pulls him off once again. Jason needs to stay on the outside. He just needs to let he needs to let sleeping dogs lie. That's what he needs to do. He needs to let the Kings of Wrestling just finish off Lance Lude, pin him before they do some serious injury to him. And, and you know, they're not going to be able to defend the VCW Tag Team titles. You said they worked for two years to get it. Well, how's it going to feel for them if they can't defend them? Because the Kings have put Lance Lude out of wrestling. And the Kings take Lance Lude and just whiplash him into the corner here. And now look at Claudio insulting the set, putting on Lance's bandana. And, Jerry, I do not approve of this. I mean, I think it's kind of funny myself. Funny? It's insulting to a team that is worthy of championship. I, I think it's I think it's hilarious. He grabs him here. Gut wrench situation. It looks like a gut wrench suplex by Claudio Castagnoli. That's right. Look at that mocking. Mocking Lance Lude. Mocking Jason. And will Jason just leave his partner down? Claudio goes for the pump kick. Jason blocks it. Sin here. And these two getting into it big time in the corner. But if I'm Claudio, I want to focus on the champs. The legal man, rather. Well, yeah, well, you see Chris Hero, that's why he's coming over here for. He's going after Jason. He's going to make sure that Sin stays out. Oh, and Hero drops him throw first on the steel right on the arena floor. And Jason's got to be out. He might have crushed his larynx. And he might have. And this is going to be the perfect opportunity for the Kings to make their example. To take Lance Lude and to drive him through the mat and to stamp in the center of an ECW ring their dominance in tag team wrestling. Here we go. Claudio in control. He's going to goozle Lance Lude here. What's he going to do with a much larger Claudio? Uh, he's going to send him for a ride. He's giving him the thumbs down oh, like a Roman a gladiator. Big time choke slam. Boy, did Lance Lude get some air there. Another arrogant cover by Claudio. And two and three quarters as the Kings of Wrestling in firm control trying to put away Lance Lude in the set. And, and they're not very far from doing that. I'm actually surprised that Lude is still trying to fight back. Oh, and then a double team pump kick there. Interesting move, taking out Lance Lude, and then just the arrogant cover by Chris Hero. Hey, Lude is still kicking out, though. I mean, come on. Now he just needs to. At first, I was saying Jason needs to stop, but Lude needs to just go ahead and lay down, let this match go by, and and let the Kings win. I mean, they're going to win anyway. I mean, he just might as well let. Oh, him. why is he wasting everybody's time? And look at Chris Hero there, pulling the ba arms back of Lance Lude, exposing the entire chest, and ramming him into the turnbuckle. Inside cradle here, Claudio, one, two, tries to surprise Lude, but as you said, a little cocky there, almost insulting.
Well, yeah, I mean, they're, they're trying to insult the set because they don't believe the set is on their level, and rightfully so. I mean, outside of outside of Vanguard Championship Wrestling and out, outside of uh, the territories of the set are notorious for running, I mean, they're not international stars. Let's be real. Let's just call a spade a spade. They're not in international stars like the Kings of Wrestling are. It is preposterous for them to think that they can go out there and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Kings. I don't agree with you, Jerry. I think a team like the set that can literally go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone in VCW, surprise teams that are larger than them, go to other places like Ring of Honor, have success, I have to imagine the set has the ability to still win this match. Oh, yeah, they have the ability to, but but they just they aren't there right now. That's the point I'm trying to make to you, Blake, is that the set, I mean, it took them two years to win the tag belts to begin with anyway. If you want my honest opinion, it was probably just a lucky break as to how they won them. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, look at Lance Lude rolls through the hot tag to Jay Sin, and he's firing away with right hands. Here comes Jay Sin, slapping away on Claudio, on Hero. Big back elbow for Hero. A big right hand for Claudio, and the numbers game's gonna be too much. Irish whip here, they go for the double boot. Sin blocks it, ducks under a Hero clothesline, and he takes out Chris Hero. Jay Sin now. Irish whip reversal. Hero's gonna charge, and a big boot by Sin. He grabs him, reverse neck breaker, flips it around. That's how they won the title. That's right. Two. Two oh. oh, and he can't get it. But it's not how they beat the Kings of Wrestling tonight. That is not how it's going to be on this evening. But Jay Sid here, as Hero tags in Claudio. Great move by Chris Hero. Oh, but the pump kick takes him out. Claudio hits his partner. Jay Sid here, jacks him down with the double underhook DET. One, two, no! Oh, two and three quarters. I thought that would do it. That was good enough for assault and battery, but not good enough for the Kings of Wrestling. Well, and like you said, you saw two prime moves right there. He, he utilized both of those moves to defeat Assault and Battery when they won the tag team titles. It was not enough tonight. It's not going to be enough tonight. Nothing they can do can stop the Kings except... Well, wait a minute, look out! Oh, look at the strength by Claudio! Jason off the top going for the splash. Claudio picks him up, drops him into the fireman's carry position. What an amazing deadlift by Claudio Castagnoli and an emphasis on the dead because that's what Jason's about to... Oh, wait a minute! What an amazing move there, dropping him in to the Samoan drop. As Claudio in firm control as the Kings of Wrestling have gotten back in control after a brief spurt by the set. That was impressive. Here we go off the ropes. Hero with a big forearm to the back of the head. He's going to try to beat him off that, the cocky cover, and that cannot keep Jason down. No, oh, I'm, I'm surprised, and I think Hero's astonished as well because Chris Hero is known for those, those forearms, and he said in the interview he was going to knock them out with it, and it didn't work there. Did not work there at all as Jason here is reeling, and you got to believe more punishment by the Kings of Wrestling could lead to an eventual victory. Well, they're hooking up for something more devastating. Now it looks like they're... Well, oh, he throws him back into him. And it looks like Jason stops the double team. Clotheslines Claudio up and over. Claudio to the floor. Keep your eyes on Lance Lou, Jerry. He's up top. Where's Little Man can fly? Twisting corkscrew off the top. Taking out the Kings of Wrestling. But, we, I mean, you say it's feast or famine with those moves. I guess in that case it paid off. But I, how smart is that? How smart is that for a guy who's been taking so much damage all this match to dive to the outside like that and, and risk his own life? I wouldn't necessarily say it's the smartest move, but it was an effective move here as the set has regained control. Claudio's down. Sin pulls him into position. As here we go, the double team, the flap check. Oh, the flipping. He went for, it was like a shooting star. Shooting star press. I, th I think his knee may have caught Claudio on the way Two. down. Oh, and he goes for the three. Wait a minute. As Bobby Cruz is going to hit three, Chris Hero kicks Bobby Cruz in the face. Well, that was a smart move. That was Ow. a smart strategy because the Cruz could not count the three. Chris Hero with a big... It was an illegal double team by the set. Hero just made it even right there. A big European uppercut taking out Lance Lude. The Kings of Wrestling are now in control, but it takes them taking out referee Bobby Cruz to knock the set out of control. Well, things are about to get very violent, Blake, because without an official out there, there's nobody to restore order. There's no one to save the set. It's all going to be the Kings, and the Kings are about to destroy them. Well, they're certainly in control now. Claudio throwing Lude in the corner and just being a big kick to the head. Hero has sit in the opposite corner and chops away as the Kings of Wrestling having their way with the VCW Tag Team Champions the set. 
That's right, you see they got Jason in one corner, they got Loot in the other. They're just toying with him at this stage because there's no one to stop them. There's no one to stop this double team. Here we go, double team reversal. Wait a minute, and Claudio gets nailed with a forearm by Hero in the set now, using their smarts and teamwork to regain control here. They're in the ropes. Here we go, the set off the ropes. What are they gonna do? Oh, and there goes Loot, and there goes Jason. As the kings of wrestling take out the set, and it looks like they're signaling for something here. And they're calling, they're waving at something. I don't know what that is. And here another comes another referee. official. Another official, probably one that's on not on the take like Cruz. On cue here. Oh, wait, there's a roll through by Loot. Two, three, that's it, that's it. The set has done it. The set has won the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships. There's no, no, there's no way that's going to stand. The second official out here, by order of the Kings of Wrestling, Lance Lude with the roll through, shocking Chris Hero, and the set now, in addition to being VCW Tag Team Champions, have just won the extremely coveted Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles. This has got to be the biggest upset of the millennium, Blake. I, better than the punker winning the lottery. The, the, the set, the, 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 the Ring of Honor and the VCW Tag Team Champions, you nearly guaranteed victory for the Kings. Oh, wait a minute. What is Bobby Cruz doing here? He's the original official. He was kicked in the face. He knows he was kicked in the face by Chris. That's Hero. right. That's right. So it should be it should be a disqualification. That's what it should be. Bobby Cruz discussing it with our second official here. As Jason none too pleased about a possible reversal of decision. Oh, and look at Claudia with a pump kick taking Sin out. The Kings of Wrestling are sore losers. This is terrible. And there's a kick by Hero to... Hold on, oh, let's hear the announcement. There, you heard it. The Kings of Wrestling disqualified. They're not done here. The set may have won the match, but they didn't win the war. The Kings are still the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions. That was the right call. Bobby Cruz was the original referee, and Bobby Cruz was kicked in the head by Chris Hero. That should have been a disqualification, and guess what time it is, Blake? It's time for the KRS-1. The KRS-1 right there, the extremely devastating double-team maneuver. We already saw Claudio just take out Jason there with a Ricola bomb. Nobody kicks out of the KRS-1. I want you to know, no one has ever, nor will they ever kick out of the KRS-1, especially not Lance Lude, especially not Jason. And now look, wearing the VCW Tag Team titles. what the Kings of Wrestling are doing. They not they're only, it's obvious what they're doing. They're taking the VCW tag titles. A p conquering hero parading around the ring. They have their ring of one Ring of Honor tag title with them. They steal the VCW tag team titles, but we all know at the end of the day, the set wins this one by disqualification. Both teams hold on to their respective titles. Then why are the Kings leaving with the VCW title? Because they attacked the set after the bell. They jumped them, they stole the titles, they nailed a Rikula bomb and a KRS-One. Do you think they're getting up? I can't wait to see what Commissioner Pantis tries to do by this one. Is he going to go out there and take the belts from the Kings of Wrestling? And in addition to stealing the belts, that insult to injury, they're stealing the ring jackets now of the set. And it look, it's kind of interesting there. Claudia almost looks like Lance Lude. This is magnificent. This is terrible. And all I can say for Jason and Lance Lude is that we can get Commissioner Panthers, President for Travis Bradshaw, get the Kings of Wrestling back to VCW and get a fair and square rematch here. No disqualifications. No way they can weasel out of it this time because they did not win this match, but they're walking away with the straps. Why is it even necessary? The Kings are the champions, Blake. What a great ending to tonight's event. I, I, this has been fantastic. So, Jerry, amazing night of wrestling. Liberty Lottery 2010. We've seen a lot of debuts, a lot of interesting action. The Punker wins the Liberty Lottery. 
but at the end of the day, we still have some more questions to be answered. So for Jerry Stefanitsis, I am Blake Chadwick. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining VCW Wrestling with Liberty Lottery 2010.